Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we're live. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd stop while I was on a roll. Then <laughs> <laughs> I just realised I was on a roll, but I stopped and I forgot to actually unmute you guys. So now you're unmuted. So now you can say hi. Hi! <laughs> so Hello. sorry for that. Thank Exceedingly you. long pause, then everybody. You could have done the whole show yourself. I could have done. I would. I would have done. I, 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 I could. Yeah. Anyway, today we're um, we're doing a little bit uh, of a different show. We're not uh, we're not going to have a topic and talk about it. We've decided to change the format up a little bit because we're basically because we're running out of topics to talk about, um, and we don't want to start going into things like um, Gamergate and you know all, all the specific problems oh, you, in you gaming even and all said that. The word. You know what I mean? We don't want to start going into the the political stuff. That's uh, oh. I mean we may mention it, but you know we're not gonna we're not that we're not that serious a show. We're all geeks and we're into our games basically. So yeah, um, today we're just we're just swapping it up a bit, and you can just uh, see how see how it goes. Um, first of all, we're just going to again talk about what we've been playing, what we've uh, what we've been on with since last week. Uh, I'll I'll kick off on that as well. well I'm uh, I've still been playing some Saints Saints Row Four. Um, quite enjoying it, I'll be honest with you. Now I'm getting into it, and now I've actually fixed the problems with my computer. Occasionally, I get a game that runs beautifully, like Far Cry Three. When I was playing that, I get a, a game that runs beautifully for for an hour or two, full settings, frame rates brilliant, and then it just crashes to desktop. And I don't know if it's my computer, I don't know if it's a hardware thing, or I don't know if it's the game itself. And I look it up, and other people have the same problem, so I don't know. But anyway, I've been having that with Saints Row Four. But I've, what I've done is I've turned the post processing off. And I've turned uh, some other settings off. Um, can't remember exactly. And it seems to be stable. So I may be up for a, a multiplayer game of that at some point, Steve. Yeah. Uh, was it How your, many... uh, your, uh, your Far Cry 3 problem down to overclocking? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I still have it now and I haven't got anything overclocked. And I've got a much better PC. The same graphics card. So it's either my, six, uh, my GTX 680 is dodgy in some way. Yeah. Um, or it's the game and it just doesn't like running with certain settings or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Has your card ever been fine or has it always had little buggy problems? Um, well, it runs fine with a lot of high fidelity other games. Like, for example, I played Deus Ex Human Revolution all the way through full settings. Again, beautiful looking D DirectX 11. You know, everything turned on, all the post processing, all Strange. the physics stuff. No, no problems. And I've had it with most games, but Far Cry 3 and uh, Saints Row 4 are both doing the same thing. They're just kind of... Well, Saints Row 4's got this thing where it, the game pauses on the screen, the graphics just stop, but the, if I press jump, you can hear me jump, and if I start walking forward, you can hear me walk forward and stuff, so the game's still running, but obviously I don't know the menus. In, it's not like a, my quick two yeah, days yeah. where I could do escape, up, up, enter, and I'm, I was there, you know, because I've done it so many times. Uh, it's a bit different with uh, modern games. and lots Mine of was console ones. key, Q, tab, in there. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Same, similar kind of thing, yeah. But so yeah. How are you first there? time you played the uh, sen uh, new Saints Row game? Um, I've, first time I've played a Saints Row game, actually. Oh, I mean, really? I've never played. I've got two and three. I got them in some Humble Bundle pack sale, obviously. And, <laughs> you um, got it in a sale? Yeah. Got it but in I'm, a sale. We're going to have to change my uh, my, my name to Chris Sale Seabock instead of Spiky Seabock. <laughs> um, yeah, I've and got I, the, uh, the entire Saints Row franchise in the, uh, the Christmas Steam sale for about £6. What, what I, happened to Saints Row? Because I remember the first Saints Row coming out and just being kind of a... a, a Cheesy Grand Theft Auto ripoff. And That's where it started it's, off as. Yeah, now they're crazy, haven't they? They were quite a uh, well. Some of the developers from the uh, from Grand Theft Auto Three, I think, moved over. Right. After that, uh, which is why it's got kind of like a more Grand Theft Auto feel. But it, it is basically Grand Theft Auto, but fun. It is. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just got a much more humorous side to it. But it's, like, I mean, the opening sequence to Saints Row Four when you uh, save the world and it's got. Uh, Aerosmith playing in the background. No, I thought that was yeah. hilarious. Well, I've made I've made my character. I said he looks like the guy from Wet Wet Wet. He's got a ponytail. He's a bit. He's, I know the guy <laughs> Wet 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 isn't ginger, but um, he's got a ginger hair. He's got like um, honestly, some of the stuff he can wear. You can put on like as a full like muscly torso dude like bigger than anything like arnie size type thing he's and you can put him in a dress and it, it stretches to him perfectly it's brilliant uh, and you know like the oblivion um 
uh, Elder Scrolls type character customizations where you can literally change everything about the face and stuff. Mm. You can do that with this as well, and everything that you wear fits in perfectly. You see, they should release a game which is just that, because I'd play that shit. I would play that well, for hours if I could just bend people's faces to the nth degree. I did. I, I, I when I played Skyrim because you like I usually play someone like the K Khajiit or or what are the dragon lizard things called the Argonians. Uh, Argonians. When Argonians, I play because yeah. because they're aliens essentially. Or, you know what I mean? They're, they're not human. I always make them like crazy looking and stuff. But when it's human, I can't get away with it. I can't get away with big bulgy eyes and massive ears and stuff. I have to make it. At least I sensible. I don't know. This is this is only going to be funny to you and me. But do you remember the first UFC custom fight that you made? <laughs> it was nothing short of an abomination. <laughs> was. Andy was called Tommy Two Tits as well. I think. Yeah. Tommy you Two made Tits. You as ugly somewhere. as you possibly could. I've done that before. I mean, you, you basically you get to a point where you're just moving all the sliders to either one extreme yeah. or the other to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the, but apart from that as well, the actual gameplay of the game, it's a little bit loose. It doesn't feel like professional, if you know, it doesn't feel like it's finished. It doesn't feel, I mean, there's, I haven't really experienced any bugs yet, but there's, it doesn't feel like GTA. It feels actually a lot more like Prototype, um, if Sam, yeah, played that. Sam's played that. Um, it, you, you can, I've actually just got the wall, wall running thing and you can just run straight up walls and stuff and huge skyscrapers and there's this yeah. huge like um, ship, uh, alien ship above you for the entire game, or so far anyway in my game, and there's loads of towers that you can climb and get to the top of, but the tower climbing is actually a lot more interesting than anything in like Assassin's Creed or anything like that, because each of the towers are slightly different and uh, you have to use your powers to get to the top of them and, and there's, there's other things. Like crackdown. It is, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's got, crackdown. Very crackdowny feel though. It's a part of it kind of goes an, an extra step to the point where like you can well they, they call it gliding. Mm. But you can literally jump off a building and then fly across the city with your arms kind of behind your back, just like <laughs> getting ready to plow head first into I, something. I should have took a screenshot to show you, but I've actually my characters were running around in a thong. That's all he's wearing. He's just running around the city in, in a thong. So with, you've dressed him in a thong and a dress so far. Is there something you're not telling us, Chris? Actually, you know what? I actually just unlocked a part of the game where uh, your DLC unlocks. I've just got past something, and I got DLC with the one I got. It was mm. quite a lot. In fact, I spent about half an hour pressing enter to get through all the DLC that I'd just unlocked. And um, <laughs> I, I got some superhero uniforms, so I put one of them on at the moment. But yeah, before that, I was walking around in a thong, bit of makeup, and a huge, muscly guy. A bit well, the most a It was just eyes and. Uh, that was it, I think, just the eyes. Uh, One of the most entertaining yeah. things about that game is the, uh, I forget what they call, but basically where you do insurance fraud and you've got to throw yourself in front of cars. <laughs> oh because, man, like, it's a is that insurance? effect. I did uh, it. I, th I, th I think you've seen it, uh, seen yes. me play it, but basically you can just bounce around the city, bouncing off cars and everything, and no, then millions upon millions. Isn't that to break the simulation? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, not that's insurance all of the, fraud or whatever. You, uh, that's what it's kind of poised as within the game, but all of the tasks you do are meant to break the simulation. Yeah. That's why you keep like kind of pushing the limits. But the, I mean, it's, it's really uh, the, that that particular one. It took me a while to get used to how to do it. You mm. literally just hold fo forward down for the entire time, which I didn't realise. But you can just bounce yourself off buildings, and it's just ragdolling everywhere across the city, and you you bounce a ridiculous amount of distance. It's it's stupid. It's just daft, and I really like it. I've got the dubstep gun as well with my DLC, <laughs> yeah. but it's the dubstep remix gun. So I I'm actually playing. Original. I'm going to say I'm actually playing classical music with a bit of dubstep going on in the background. It's a bit weird. Um, that, what you just described there, the, the kind of insurance breaking the simulation thing. Did you ever play um, Burnout? Uh, burnout yeah. Three. I've played a few that Burnouts. Had, that had I'm not a mode sure where three. basically you had to crash your car and cause as much damage oh, as possible. Yeah, yeah. It was all in slow yeah. motion. You could kind of move the car <coughs> around. So that was that was brilliant fun. I loved that game. That uh, Burnout Three was class. I played that. Burnout Two as well was good. Mm. I think it's a destruction derby. Oh God, and um, Twisted yeah. Metal as well. That was uh, another one that was good about smashing other people. It was, Twisted, Twisted Metal wasn't really a car game. If you actually analyse it, it's more like a first person shooter. Yeah, and the guy the guy who's um, who designed that, he's recently announced that he's not doing any more or he's not doing any more someone else Good, may do it. Stopped but, too. Yeah, well I, I I don't play them so I haven't uh, <laughs> I don't know how far they went. Interestingly enough is a guy called David Jaff who 
the two games that he's known for, and they're both very different, is the Twisted Metal series and the God of War series. Like he right. was the creative director, I think, on Twisted Metal, I believe. And then he wanted to do something different. He went to make the. Th- he was on the first God of War, and it has. He didn't work on any of the sequels. I think he just worked on the first one. Uh, right. He was like the creative director of that. So that's two really disparate things. But apparently, after the God of War, he had a bit of a weird sort of falling out with the games industry for a while. Then he came back with the new Twisted Metal a couple of years ago. Right, probably kickstarted. I don't know if it was any good, but it was a DACA downloadable only one. I don't know. I think the, the only one that really came close to Twisted Metal 2 was the one on the PSP. I think they did re release that for the PS3, didn't they? I'm uh, not sure. I can't remember which one it was. They do, they're doing a lot of re releasing of things, aren't they? And, and I mean, that's some of the things I want to talk about a bit later on, actually. Um, mm. other, other games I've been playing, I'll quickly go through them. Um, uh, Borderlands pre sequel. I very, very briefly played a little bit of that only because there was a golden key um available yesterday. I think it's still available. And I think if you if you jump on their Facebook page or their Twitter page or something, you can grab it now. Um it's got two golden keys actually, I think the one chord with two keys. If you care still. Uh Civ five, I spent three days and three nights and three three AMs uh, like playing it and trying to beat um America how aggressive is America in that game by the way <laughs> how aggressive I swear to god they're just the cities were just popping up all over the- declaring war on everybody I was careful not to declare war on them until I got a big army built up but just destroying everybody but I lost to um, what is it Arani Pull Arana Pull Assyria but they get the name of the guy who, r- who runs yeah. Assyria so, uh, some history dude um, he he uh, he That's beat me with a cu- he beat me with a culture uh, history uh, beat. He oh my beat god! Beat you with a culture. Beat me with a culture beat. I only in these paintings. Observe yeah, our dialect. No, that, that is exactly <laughs> it, Sam. That's basically it. You spend the game building up um, works of art and building up like tourism and getting your getting people to come to your city to see it to see all these works of art and stuff. And that's how you get culture points. Um, and you have to get them by like going to ruins or. Uh, you get them naturally in the game somehow. Uh, Steal no more. He's more of a pro when it comes to Civ games. Um, but I've uh, I, I I was trying to go for a science victory, but at the beginning of the game I didn't make my mind up quick enough, and I decided I'll just do an even kind of spread of science culture um, attacking people, you know, making friends, with, and, and I just kind of went. Oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. About 150 turns in. I decided, right, I'm going to go for science. By that point, he had about 3,000 more culture than I did. And I was like, ah, lost it. But I got the giant, giant death robot first time ever. Yeah, that and is, uh, is satisfying. I, I didn't get the um, the nuclear thing. I've still got my save, though, and it, you know it tells you you can continue after the save. Yeah. I might do it just to see what it's like. Um, but I, I'm going to have to take over Greece, unfortunately, because they've got all the uranium, so I can't do anything about it. You can always trade with them. I... Uh, uh, no, I can't. He hates me. He hates everyone. He's been a bit of a warmonger as well the whole game. I've been really good actually. This game, I, I usually attack everyone, but this game, I just I, I left it and I thought I'll try it another way. I actually really enjoyed doing it. You know, doing other things than just attacking people. It was uh, one of the best things to do is to try and get as many city states on your side as possible because they give you massive leverage, especially when it comes to the World Congress. Yes, um, and again, uh, Assyria had like by the end of it, they had like thirty seats in the World Congress, and I had. I think it was maybe five or six. So yeah, I was yeah. just getting owned all the time in it. Anyway, Civ Five, brilliant game. Get it. Or the new one. I haven't played the new one yet. The new one's not as good as Civ Five. Yeah. It's still at the time to play, but uh I've went back to Civ Five now. For See, I have announced um uh, Sydney is working on a new game. Something to do with space, isn't it? It's um Yeah, it's uh, space colonies and it's apparently it's in it kind of it's interoperable with Civ Five or Civ uh, Beyond Earth, right. so the, ga- the games can like you can use the save games to, to that, do things on the other. Is that like Spore and Galactic ba- and Spore oh. Galactic Battles? I don't know. I've not done even heard. <laughs> not even heard of that actually. That was that kind of Galactic something. Galactic something. It was a um, I don't pack for Spore, wasn't it? All right. Uh, oh, this Galactic, isn't uh, this is Galactic actually, Adventures. Yeah, this isn't an add-on for Civ. This is a new game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in you. You do all the kind of like the the planet side stuff, and then once you've decided a planet you want to settle on, you can then go into the city mode. Yeah, like, it's well, no, this is. I mean, this game has been touted as a bit of a Star Trek simulator, so it's kind of federations in space. 
there's not a lot of details about it, but it's going to be a, a new franchise and a new style of game. Give it a go, maybe. Yeah. It'd be interesting because it, 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 from what I could see of a civilization game, you kind of tied down to what what you've got on Earth. Whereas if you make up of different kind of resources, yeah, it could be interesting. That could it could yeah, it's be called, like a, it's called a new Sid way Sid Meier's Starships. Bit of trivia as well for you. Sid Meier didn't actually design Civilization Five. They're just using his name now, and I didn't oh, yeah, actually realise that he was the guy behind Microprose either. Mm. Of course he is. I mean, I'm an idiot. I don't. I don't. I, literally, since I started getting into indie dev, that's when I started take, paying attention to gaming news. Before that, I just didn't care. I just wanted to play the games that I'd heard of, and my mates had told me were good. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's going to be arriving early this year, so they've already kind of worked on it. Sid Meier did actually work on this with a small team, so it, this is it, the game he's designed. Um, but yeah, it's basically Star Trek by the looks of it. Yeah, it's just Civ in space. It's still got the uh, like hexagon format grid. That could be interesting. Excuse me. Um, other games I played, uh, Warcraft 3, very briefly. I think I may have men mentioned that last week. You did, yeah. So have you been playing that the single player campaign on that? Yeah, I just thought I'd give it another go and have a have a faff because you can get it in much higher resolution as I think I might oh, yeah, have pointed yeah, out yeah. last week. Um, just by using the GeForce experience, if you've got a GeForce, I'm sure Radeon have got or ATI rather AMD AMD now, isn't it? Jesus, I'm old. Um, <laughs> yeah, when I've uh, when, when I you can use the Voodoo Two experience and. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Sam, this is a PC geek talk, and Voodoo 2 is a very, very old graphics card you may have, may not have heard of. No. Nope. No, no, they were brilliant. They were, for the time, anyway, they were awesome. Um, I had two of them, naturally, in SLI, one of the very few people that I knew who had two. I was yeah, like, Jimmy had four. big blue VGA obviously. cable sticking out the back of your PC as well. No, 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 that's, that's a Voodoo 3. That was a Voodoo 3, yeah, but the Voodoo 2 had it uh, like cross through, didn't it? Yeah, just a tiny one, though. It's not, it didn't really interrupt anything. But now, the, obviously, the SLI is internal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I played a little bit of Warcraft 3. Kind of just realised I played a lot of it in the you know years gone by, and I thought, oh, I can't be bothered. So I, I didn't really finish any of the games I was playing. Just wanted to see how it worked. Uh, FTL again, been playing that quite a bit since we last talked. So just because I, I got it, I, um, just because Steve said that again, I'm not, I'm not convinced they got to the end without cheating, but he probably did. Because I, I, accusation I, I struggled like hell to get to the end, right? Uh, I didn't say it was easy. No, no, I'm going to say, it, but I, I played it so many times. I yeah. played the, the game so many times, and I, I got quite good at it, but. I just couldn't not could not get to the end without dying. Did you keep getting to that bit of the corridor and you just ended up beating everyone up in a corridor? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think one of the things uh, with uh, with fast and light is uh, it's the random seed. You've got a there's a well, lot of luck involved in the way that the uh, the battles are generated. I played one game of it and I got to the last boss and I got to the first section of the last boss instead of you know there's three sections of him um, yeah. and I got I got owned but the battle was really long so I'd obviously done something right in that playthrough you know I'd, I'd saved up my scrap I'd managed it well and I'd made sure that I was focusing on kind of getting the right things and not just spending everything as soon as I got to a store you know making sure that I got enough fuel making sure that I got enough missiles and didn't Miss fire my missiles constantly like I used to you know. So with the boss fight, uh, if I remember rightly, uh, you've got to basically use all energy weapons for the first round, and then equip things like missiles and laser weapons for the second mm. round once you've took its main shields down. I didn't it's got have... a super shield, you've got to get rid of that, otherwise it's pointless. I didn't have Sorry. any any laser weapons though, so I was just, I mean, missiles, that's what I was hoping, I was hoping to take out his, it's, you know what did it for me, it was the triple missile that he fires. He fires three, and it goes, dun, 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 and it just takes out your whole ship, and you're like, everything's on fire, and holes in your hull, and you're just like, oh god, and all my people yeah. are dying, and then they teleport people on board, and you're like... <laughs> drones as well, drones come handy, you can have a repair drone, and uh, like a sentry drone, so anyone teleports on board, that'll just go off and start fighting them. I didn't bother with any drones, because I, I thought, I don't have the money for them, or the, or the space for them, in fact, I probably well, again, should have it, done. It's luck because they're the majority of my weapons are got from battles. Yeah, yeah. This time so I, I was actually quite lucky with weapons as well. But that's the thing is, it's the random thing, isn't it? It's the roll of the dice, is it? Uh, uh, that's why it's compared to a roguelike, isn't it? That's why it is technically a roguelike. But it is because you die and you're dead. You don't. You can't start again from anywhere unless you 
hack your save or you you mm. constantly alt tabbing and copying and saving your save file like I was doing um, the first time. I, well, actually, not the first time. After I played it about five, Did six times. You accused times. me of cheating. No, I, I you told can't you help before. Save scum, can he? You I can't. told you before. I told you before that I did that. I, t I even used a, a, an editor to edit my ship and give myself loads and loads of um, scrap, and that was the only way that I could kill the final boss. And I still haven't managed to kill him without it. But I've only played two games since then. So, but I did get to, get to the boss. At least I did better than I did previously. Um, last one, anti chamber, which I only played again from the beginning. I haven't completed it uh, yet because we were talking about it last week and it made me really, really want to play it again and see if I could remember. And I can't bloody remember half the puzzles. So they're so abstract, some of them. It's it's so it's so weird that I just... It's still a challenge and that's cool, I think. But you still can't bind the keys, though, can you? I, probably not. He hasn't touched it. I don't think he's released any other games either as well. He's been resting on the laurels of Antichamber for quite a while. The guy who When was it released? 2008, I think. Oh, not that sure? long ago. Oh, no, it was 2013, I think. Any chamber? No, no, it's not that. I've, I've had it all of last year, I think. Any chamber, um, 2013, January. All oh, right. I must have it's got it roughly when it came out then. I thought I was lit to the party. That's cool. All right, so he's not resting on laurels. He's still rest. Well, he is, but. You know what I mean? The very but, little laurels. Yeah, he hasn't he hasn't announced another game that I'm aware of, at least, anyway, or he's not pimping it on his social media too much. So, anyone else played any other games? Um, well I've played I've not very played I've not played very much recently, but what I have been playing quite a bit of is Elite Dangerous. Um I probably mentioned it on yeah. last week's show as well. Um I'm really enjoying it. It's uh it's not a game that I play compulsively. I've not put many hours into it, but it's a sort of game where when you do play it, you do kind of have to give it a bit of a run. Yeah. Because you, you're exploring a, a full-size galaxy. The, the entire Milky Way is uh, modelled at one-to-one -one scale in the game, which is crazy. <laughs> and it's it's got some really cool things. Like, you know they found those uh, exoplanets recently? Yeah. They've put them in the game. So cool. as scientific as a kind of scientific breakthroughs come in to find new planets or name new stars or whatever, they get put in the game. So have the, they, the have galaxy they put the rover on sync. Mars. <laughs> I haven't been to the um, so, uh, solar system yet. Actually, I'm not allowed. I think I mentioned this last time. Yeah, as well. you did. Yeah, you need to get you some to kind of permit, permit. Yeah. To go to Sol, if you don't, yeah, if you don't have a permit yeah. and you, you turn up there, they'll just blow the shit out of you. <laughs> yep. So I'm 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 working my way to get into a permit, but yeah, it's 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 good fun. It's uh. It feels like it's infinite, though. Is it? it is it never ending? It is, yeah. It's, so it's, yeah, it's one of those games that I'll probably never play, apart from you know on an Oculus Rift just to try it out. But I I don't think I'd ever play it because I don't really have the patience or the time these days to. It's very much a simulator, and I think this. You've got to approach it like that. It's not a combat game as such, although the combat is really good. Hmm. Um. But it's it's kind of a there's there's lots to do, and there's th th some of the visuals, some of the things you see, like you'll fly into um, a, a big war zone, and there'll be a capital ship just come out of hyperspace, surrounded by blue smoke with um, like lightning in it, and then there's ships appear from everywhere and start shooting at it, and all these turrets start firing back, and you're in the middle of this huge battle. It's like the Star Wars battles. It's cool. really cool. So there's stuff like that in it, and like flying through asteroid fields and. You seeing need, a sunrise around the back of a planet and things. You need an accelerator though, really, don't you, to play it. In fact, you know... Accelerator? Do you reckon oh, that'll right. do? Will that do the job? I know it's a yeah. really old shitty one, but it yeah. will, because I've got an accelerator on it. Yeah, I mean, that's what I use. If I can get it cheap in a sale... You, these sold out when Elite <laughs> Dangerous came out. You won't get these in a sale, they're like rockin' our shit at the moment. No, I mean Elite um, Dangerous, not the... Alright, no, that... Yeah, probably no, I'd, I'd, I'd buy my, I buy my peripherals and all my hardware full price. I don't wait for sales for all that kind of stuff. It's just games. I'm just addicted to getting games for two or three quid. I'm, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things is that the game is still in the early stages. Now it's it's stable, but it's missing a lot of features. Like it's very hard to play the game online with friends. Hmm. There's no indication on your hood that you that that, that, that ship is your friend. There's no there's, imagine, there's I, the very basic things like you can communicate with your friend by typing to them, and that's about it. I imagine it'd be quite difficult anyway because of the space thing, because you're in space and it's infinite, and you could easily lose each other. Or 
Um, it's not that easy to lose each other, actually, because you tend to warp to the same areas. Right. So you've got you can fly around at normal speeds. You can go to super cruise where you can fly around solar systems, or you can warp to different systems, system, different stars. So you've got three different ways of doing it, and depending on which one you're on, you've got like different radar ranges and stuff. It's not that hard to find each other, to be honest. Uh, the navigation right. aspect of it is pretty good. But I'm looking I'm forward to seeing other stuff. I might have asked this before. Are there aliens in it, or is it just humans? It's just future? humans, yeah. They're just humans. Uh, it's like the Red Dwarf universe, basically. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no aliens. So, uh, what, what's the MO? What, what's the, the main point of the game? It's whatever you want it to be. There's three different ways to be become an elite. You can be a trader, you can be um, a combat elite, or you can be an exploration elite. So you can choose to explore the galaxy... You can choose to fight people, become a pirate, or you can choose to be a trader and just like go between different systems, finding the goods that are selling well, um, take them to other places, ferry things around, and you can kind of balance it out. Or you can you can dwell within like subsections of that. So the like the pirate would be somewhere between a trader and a combat specialist. Right. You just like lurk around the nav points of um, popular star systems and chase people and drag them out of hyperspace and kick their ass. There's something called interdiction, which is awesome. Fair enough. Uh, it, you make your own game out of it. Is there any form of narrative at all? Like, is there, is there yeah. a sort of, you start out here, you meet some bloke and you've got uh, an enemy and a, There's a, a little full lesson, story. you know, blah, blah, blah. There's a full story and every mission that you do in the game, just say you haul some cargo for a space station in a certain system, then you affect that whole system. So if you're if they're if they're needing guns, for instance, and you start running guns to the system, then they might be able to defeat their enemies, and then the whole galaxy balance of power will change. So the factions are always changing. There's civil wars going on, and, and there's kind of there's the Galnet, which shows you all of the kind of overall story, like the emperor of the galaxy is ill, and he might you know, be poisoned. So I think I might get it when Oculus is out properly because I couldn't be asked with a track IR. I don't think I could. I don't think I could be asked. One, getting the new, more hardware. I've got so many things plugged into my computer and now it's ridiculous. I'm glad you can chain USB. Put it that way. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think I'll wait because I really did quite enjoy it when I played it on the the Oculus. But the the, the resolution was a problem. So yeah, it seems to be a better game at the moment than Star Citizen, which is its direct competitor. Star Citizen seems to be going a very different route, right? Um, and it's just taking for it. It's taking forever, basically. But they're doing so much with Star Citizen; it's really weird. Like they've got a whole first-person shooter module in there, so you'll be able to kind of fight in space stations and stuff, or mm. on planets, which is really weird. Is it all procedural as well, Star Citizen? No, no. Star Citizen is very non-procedural. Right. So they basically they design every area, even like the space sections are not procedural. You'll have instances which you've got a planet in the background and some asteroids and stuff, which is a map that's been designed, which really works against it. Because mm. you're basically playing Far Cry in space, because <laughs> that's a Far Cry engine. The it's, Cry engine. Yeah, yeah, Cry engine. Not the Far so, Cry engine. So I'm I'm thinking Elite's probably the better of the two games at the moment. Right. Although Star Citizen is very beautiful I, and very ambitious, you know I heard of Star Citizen, but I assumed it was a two D platform. I think I've talked about. I said that before. It's Starbound, isn't it? Starbound, yeah. Starbound as well, which I've been, again been playing, but I haven't been playing this week. But yeah, um, that, that's that's basically it, really. That's all I've been playing at the moment. Uh, what about you, Sam? Then I know you've been you've been on a few games this week on your new PS4. Um, I just started playing today the new Resident Evil HD. Re-release. It's the re it's the re-release of the GameCube version, which I had played a long time ago on my sister's GameCube and really loved. So they did like a, a re-release of that, and they've done the re-release of the re-release now. Yeah. Get your head around that. <laughs> I just started playing that, and then I was uh, earlier on this week. I was playing Infamous Second Son, which is the third, although not not like it's not a sequel sequel to Infamous Two, but it's the it's... third in the Infamous series of games. I've heard that that's the best so far. Of the of the infamous games, um, in some ways it is, and in some ways it isn't. I was actually really thinking about this because I've played the first two quite a lot and really liked them. So, 
for those of you that don't know what Infamous is, it's a, it's a sort of open world superhero em up. Like it's an open world exploration game where you, the first game you start off as this guy um, who there's a big explosion goes off in his city. It's a fictional city, and he wakes up in hospital with like ele- well, doesn't he? he wakes up on the spot where it went off with electrical powers, and everybody else around him is dead. And then throughout the story, you you sort to get more powerful. You get more electrical powers. You can shoot, you know, you shoot lightning beams out. It's just, basically it's a shooter with electricity superpowers. Like you get a, an electric grenade, an electric rocket. You can glide um, and climb and grind it's a lot of rails fun. and stuff. Yeah, it's a really fun game. Second one, it just did everything the first one did, but better pretty much. Wow, Except for the you what? Sorry, I was going to say that's the amazing for a sequel, isn't it? <laughs> It's that pretty much it everything better. better. Yeah, it's pretty much everything better. It feels a lot more tightly controlled the second one than the I first did, one. I didn't enjoy it at all. I got to the end of it and I enjoyed the final, you know, the final section with with the big giant thing and that obviously there's a big giant thing in it. Um <coughs> but the, the game just felt a bit lackluster in general. I didn't care about the the protagonist. I didn't care about the 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 fight that they were fighting, you know. I mean, I was playing it as a good guy. Yeah. And all of the cutscenes they don't have different cutscenes for whether you do it good or bad, I don't think. They just have ambiguous cutscenes where he's just a bit of a dick and he doesn't really have yeah. he doesn't really have yeah. a good guy or a bad guy vibe about him and I just didn't like it. I didn't like that. I don't know. Some the summit about it something about it was didn't didn't do the, do it for me for the second one. That's why I haven't went for the third one. That's interesting because I think the second one's a, quite a big improvement on the first one in a lot of ways. I think again it, there was a lot of hype around Infamous when it first came out, and the original, uh, the original game did something a bit new as well. At the time, remember that and Prototype were kind of vying against each other, and there was a, a bit of competition there. And I think Infamous won the battle, but Prototype was arguably more interesting. Uh, probably not as. The- Go they've both got their strengths as games. They're both, for how similar they are, they're both really different as well, I'd say, for a type of Infamous. But anyways, um, so Second Son, it, at the end of Infamous 2, uh, there's a very decisive ending, should we put it that way? You can't really continue Cold Story, who's the main guy in Infamous 1 after Infamous 2. Right? No matter which ending you choose, the good or the bad, it's over for him. Like he's not, You can't play as him anymore. So you start off as somebody else, and he's a... Uh, um, a Native American kid called Delson who looks like a total guy you want to punch in the face straight away. He's got like all the little wanky tattoos on his arms and the sort of, you know, wearing extra wrapped things around his arms, like little bracelets and shit and a daft hat that he never takes off. Even when he's climbing up skyscrapers, it's like, you're not sweating a bit. But yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and, but he, for all that, you think he's going to be a complete arsehole. He's actually quite a likeable character. A lot of which I put down to the fact that he's got his brother as well as a cop who's a bit older than him and his brother's like your sort of straight laced, you know, Delson, you should really fly right and blah 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 blah, <laughs> he's that kind of guy. And Delson's just a bit of a yeah, whatever well, like, I'm gonna be a skatery, you know, bagsy fucking graffiti artisty type dude, man. Unlike the <laughs> arsehole that was uh was it Zach in the or was it Zal or someone? In the first what? two? The uh, sidekick. Cole. Co- no, oh, Cole. Zeke. Zeke, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! It, first of all, right, he, he he does one on you, and and then when he comes back, he double crosses you, and then he's your mate again by the end of the game, and then the second game he's your mate all the way through it, and you're like, but you really screwed me over in the first game, mate. You really yeah. did me. You really did one on me, and and he's just fine, just fine with it. <laughs> yeah, so kind of like. We have to talk about our stuff for me to really get into the spoilery stuff of Infamous. Mm. I don't really want to do that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's actually in Second Son a little bit as well, but not really. Like, you, you sort of go through Cole's legacy, like a, a side mission. But, anyways, right. you've got like your standard. You start off like. It's a bit more X Men. This guy is a bit more like Rogue from the X Men or Peter Petrelli from Heroes. The guy who, when he's around other super dudes, I'm sort of can absorb their powers. So you get this one guy who's got like smoke. So you sort of have your smoke power. You could do a little glide, a smoky glide. So you've got basically the same powers as Infamous, but they kill smoke now instead. <laughs> smoky glide. Smoky like glide. That. Yeah, he sort of puts his in, in, in Infamous. He would put his hands out behind him, and li- lightning would come out, and he'd sort of glide through the air or glide down, you know. Whereas in this, you do that, and sort of smoke comes out of your hands instead. Smoke comes out his bum instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, that's but, another thing as well. That's another reason I haven't got it. I did think that it would be just more of the same, just with different powers. Because they, they didn't do much in... Bit. One and two had basically the same stuff going on in it. There wasn't that yeah. much difference, really. I mean, there's a few extra powers in two, but nothing to shout about. Nothing I used, in fact. There's a couple of extra powers in two that were good, but the I like what what's different about this game is that you get th- you get four sets of powers. You start off with smoke, then a little bit later on you meet another. In the cold conduit, it's the super people, sort of like the mutants. It's like a gene; only certain people have it, and it manifests in different ways for everybody. So all the conduits are different, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, you get a neon girl. You can sort of run up walls and be more accurate shooting and you get video which is really weird like you have to download it from video screens and you get like weird video blocky computer gamey type weapons appear in your hands and stuff uh, and you get concrete but you get concrete you have to get concrete you get concrete by defeating the last boss who is who is like concrete woman it's, you get it at the end of the game and you can't use it it's like right concrete that was good woman. well you can use it but is it one of those where you could run around the city afterwards and yeah, just use the concrete yeah yeah I, I don't do that anymore I used to do I that a little either. bit but these days this, can't be bothered this, so one of the things that's, that's slightly disappointed about it is that in Infamous 2 there was a good variety of enemies you had militia guys you had these weird swamp monster things and you had these like ice super soldiers so there was like distinct different enemy types whereas in this there's just there's just the concrete woman's in charge of this elite military unit. She's given them all her concrete powers. So all you're fighting is dudes with a variety of concrete powers. And to, to be fair to the game, the way that they the way that they visualize Super that, pavement woman. Sorry. Well, basically, basically, it's a trivial. It's the equivalent of being. Um, they're, they're actually really like Earthbenders from Avatar. They basically control the, the ground. They can throw rocks at you, make shields, they do all kinds of stuff like psychokinetic Earth manipulation abilities. But basically. They call it concrete, but it might as well basically be earth or rock, whatever. Um, so you're basically fighting a bunch of dudes like that, and there's not much variety in the enemies. And all of Delson's powers are the same, except each of your four powers just makes you go a little bit faster, and your attacks mm. are a little bit harder. So for a fact that you have four different powers, they're all basically the same. Whereas in the other games, you just had electricity powers, and they just evolved that idea. They had one set of powers that they just pushed, rather than having four ones that never really seemed to go anywhere. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good game. Like I enjoyed it, but it didn't. It didn't. It felt like it was a pretty update with some cool stuff. That the, the stuff between Delson and his brother was really fun and like that's is, the best bit of the game. But is it PS4 good. exclusive? Yeah. Or is it on the PS3 as well? Of the release to port for it? No, it's just PS4. Because they're doing that at the moment. Aren't they? A lot of games are releasing on both and. The PS3 yeah, yeah. version's a bit shitter than the PS4 one. <laughs> the that second sub was one of those games where they were like, "Oh, we want a new, a new like exclusive for this just this console as opposed to this mm. this company." <laughs> so, uh, I Steve, concrete powers. Yeah, concrete <laughs> pavement woman. Um, so, Steve, have you played anything this week? You been it up to out? Uh, a few games. Yeah, I was just trying to think. There's another game I was playing recently that had some kind of magic concrete in it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will beat the shark gun though in that whatever game that was. That's still the best thing I've seen in my life oh, in a computer uh, game. Armed and dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wolfenstein had that magic Nazi concrete in it. Or has that magic Nazi concrete? What? It's the the new Wolfenstein, the new order. Yeah. Magic the, Nazi concrete. Yeah, that's the reason why the Nazis managed to build up so much infrastructure so quickly. Oh, right. oh I haven't I haven't got that far yet. I don't think it's exposed that's, that part of the story to me. That's quite near the beginning. Sorry, can you? What's ma- magic Nazi concrete? What? What? Uh, well, in Wolfenstein, it presupposes that the that the Nazis took the first strike with the, uh, with the nuclear weapon, so the Allies surrendered. And Nazis basically take over the world. But in order to cement their hold on the world, uh, they come up with this uh, this magic ancient concrete formula that allows them to build huge, massive structures. It doesn't matter though, it's Wolfenstein. Come on, you, know, yeah. it's not, you know, what was what, what he? he had to, in the first game he had to fight Hitler with two chain guns on his arm, it was wasn't Mecha it? Hitler. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> um, what have I been playing? Um, I've been playing a bit of Space Hulk, actually. Yeah? We yeah, were going we were going to try and play that a couple of weeks back, but we, we didn't were, get but, around uh, to it. Funny doubt. Yeah, because I, I, I haven't played it and I thought, it's not fair, you've played couple of I'd, hours. I'd only I'd... played like an hour or an half of it by that point. But yeah, well. playing Space Hulk, which is uh, for anyone who hasn't played, it's a very slow paced strategy game where you control very few units in very tight corridors. Yeah, it looks like that on yeah. the screenshots, yeah. yeah. Like in order to turn around one of your Terminators, it takes two turns. 
I was trying to explain Warhammer because um, I used to play Warhammer 40k um, and Warhammer actually. In uh, I actually used to go to Games Workshop and that. And um, I was trying to explain it to Sal because we've just recently got Risk and she was a bit confused about like how to play it and how complicated it'd get and how long the games are. And I said, well, it's nothing compared to Warhammer, you know. That's why I kind of went into it. And it, it's a different world, isn't it? That that, mm. that kind of you need to have patience and you need to have discipline to play these games and Space Hulk being from the Warhammer yeah. universe I imagine the games kind of translate although I have played um, is it Dawn of War which is like an RTS game RTS is Dawn of War Warcraft 2. 3 yeah which was I quite enjoyed it I quite enjoyed uh, Dawn of War it was a good a good game in my eyes uh, but uh, Space Hulk uh, is just uh, stupidly difficult yeah yeah like, I'm, I might so, have to play it. I'm surprised to hear you say that because you're good at strategy games. I know, but it's it, it's the random seed element of it. Like every time that you finish moving your turns, and the gene stealers move on there, oh, and basically you can take out a gene stealer quite easily. And if you've got a terminator kind of positioned facing down a corridor near one there, kind of gen points, and he's got uh, what they call it, like a bolt rifle over it is. The bolter, heavy bolter. <laughs> yeah, like heavy bolter. Then there's a percentage chance, depending on what difficulty you play, that it'll jam. And when it jams, yeah. basically that character's dead because the Jane Stillers can move quite a fan. It only takes them one hit to kill you. Have you, pl you, have you like played Warhammer? Armor. Have you played Sorry? Warhammer 40k? Have you ever played it? Yeah. Because yeah. that the, again, you have yeah, chances to jam on roll, certain weapons. Yeah. And it's, and well, it's just it's it 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 happens at very very inconvenient times. Too inconvenient to be random, in my opinion. Yeah. That's what I felt a little bit like um, with the the new. Um, God damn it! What the, the, uh, oh, it's awesome as well. XCOM. That was it. Um, the new XCOM game. When I played it, I'm a, I'm a save whore on that as well. I'm afraid uh, save scum or whatever you call it. Save and, uh, scum. Yeah, but I I found it really difficult with the random like 99 percent chance of hitting someone fail. No, but, no, no! You don't know pain until you've got a hundred and ten percent chance of hitting someone, and you still miss. That's that, what the original did to you. Well, that that's not possible, is it? So <laughs> that's a bug. Yeah, it isn't the original. I'm actually in the middle of trying to calculate probabilities in my game for the hacking, and uh, I've got things like if it's five percent hacking probability that you're going to get through it, I have to right click like twenty five, thirty, forty times before the, the random probability passes. But if it's somewhat like twenty five percent, it seems to do it first time every time. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to wangle it a little bit. It seems, feels a bit funny at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to play that Space Hulk. I've, I've got it, and I, I I'd be interested to play it multiplayer when obviously you can take the uh, the uh, random element of the bias out of it. I mean, there's well, gonna be a random number generation in there for you get your attacks more, have you? But it's, it, I think it'll be a bit more fair if you yeah. play against a human player. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give it a go this week if I get, if I get time, and I'll yeah. uh, and we'll have a game sometime. And, is it? Do you reckon there'll be long games, the multiplayer? Um, I don't know, probably about forty-five minutes. Cool. Up yeah. for that. Speaking and you play the Blood uh, Angels, which are my favourite uh, Space Marines. Mm. Speaking of um, strategy games and XCOM, mentioned that. Have any of you heard of Xenonauts? Yes, um, it's yes. on my it's on my wish list, and I, I I nearly got it in a sale, but I didn't. I, I wasn't that interested because I'd seen quite a lot of XCOM remakes now but this actually looks really really interesting apparently it's better a lot of people have said it's better than the more re the most recent xcom well, and i really it, love the most recent yeah, because XCOM, it, so. it's basically it's it's a homage to the original xcom more than the new one is kind of a, a weird sort of remake mm. this one takes it a lot more seriously and on how much detail there is in it and there's more to do i'm still not entirely sold on the art style the cartoony characters look a bit rubbish but you can get um, over that yeah, I've, from what I've seen of it, it looks fantastic. The game that, you looks know, that, like it delivers. I was just about to say, yeah, the art style doesn't matter. But you know, I think that's the reason I don't play Team Fortress 2. Because I don't like the art style. I hate the art style, in fact. I really hate the art style. I just don't like the game. I, don't, I also don't enjoy the, the whole, oh god, he's killed my turret again and I've just upgraded it to level 5. Oh, fucking hell. You know, 10 <laughs> seconds after you do Only because I don't know where to place them and I'm rubbish at the game. But, you know. Right, before we move on then, any uh, anyone uh, else played any other games? Yeah, I've been playing uh, the Talos Principle. Oh, I saw you playing that actually, and it, that's that's on my wish list as well, and looks awesome. Um, it's it's a very good looking game, it's kind of like a, a puzzle game cross with, uh, the like the touted as being quite philosophical, 
Um, it's not well. I'm an atheist, and this guy keeps going on about creation and like, all that kind of So I was, I'm kind of ignoring the story, but I'm enjoying the puzzles. Yeah, but apparently, the puzzles are really well designed. That's that's what yeah. I've heard. I didn't even know that the story was uh, about God and that. Oh, but yeah, it's by cry. Uh, it's by quoting. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the cry. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, it's on my list and I want to get it, but... I I'd know. say it's well worth it. I've seen Music's some... Uh, nice presentations, nice puzzles are good. Just ignore the guy talking about how much like God he is. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen a few people, a uh, few gamers that I've got a lot of respect for their taste, say that it's brilliant. And uh, yeah, I'll be up for that. I'll be up for playing some of that. Ted, it's on my list. Um, anything else then? <coughs> um, no, not this week. Right, so we'll move on to our next section of the... Uh, of this, the new format, the new show, and Jedi Mind Tricks has already uh, preempted this one. Um, we're, we're moving on to what's upcoming. What things are we looking forward to? What uh, what have we heard about this week that's that's interesting, or, or uh, you know, game wise? I mean, specifically, or even hardware, or you know, anything like that. Anything that's that's coming up that's that's interesting. Uh, again, I'm I'll kick it. Also, uh, oh, you're going to kick off. I was just going to say, I'll kick it off. Uh, with one thing that I'd actually forgot about, but I knew about, I heard when they announced it, um, Grim Fandango's getting re-released. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Tim Schafer's work in general. He all, they're also redoing, um, they haven't started like looking at the old assets and seeing how they're going to do it yet, but they're also going to remake um, Day of the Tentacle. They remade Monkey Island a while back, and you know I said that you could you could like pre on the Xbox you could press select and it'd switch switch between the graphics. Mm. They're doing the same with um, with Grim Fandango. Um, I haven't played the original game. I downloaded it recently uh, from somewhere. I can't remember. Why. It was it was a legal for, uh, a legal download. It was it's from somewhere, but I. Um, uh, I think it was free somewhere actually. Maybe on Good Old Games. But anyway, I. Um, I <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> but look, at least I'm proof that you can get games for, for next to nothing these days, and that I think that's a, a good thing for gamers anyway. The fact that you don't have to pay 50 quid for it. Or maybe I should go into a rant on that later. Maybe that should be our rant section. Me talking about how much I hate the price of games. Um... But yeah, no, the Day, Day of the Tentacle, I, I kind of briefly explained it. It's an old point-and-click adventure game, and um, it's it's the sequel to Maniac Mansion, which uh, Rod Gilbert Ron, Rod, Rod Gilbert is remaking, which is another thing that's coming out. So they're redoing a lot of the old games of my youth that I, I spent nearly all of my childhood playing, all these text adventures. Um, but Grim Fandango is one I totally missed out on. I think when I saw it in the shop, I remember uh, Manny, the the main guy in it. I remember him on the front of the cover, uh, front of the box in our local game shop. But I just, I don't know, it just didn't appeal to me. I never even, no one ever suggested it or talked to me about it, so it never really landed. Was uh, it, it, um, wasn't that a PS1 game? No. PC. PC. The PC? Was it only ever PC? CD-ROM, yeah, I think so, yeah. I think, wasn't it Amiga before, was it, or was it always no, PC? It was 3D, it was, it, it, I'm pretty sure it was PC, it, was, it came out when I got my PC. Right. It was a game that I really remember, because it was on cover discs and stuff. That'll be it then, because when I got my PC, I spent the first 10 years only playing Quake 2, pretty much. <laughs> Not really touching any other game, so that explains it. Uh, there was also a few new Monkey Islands that came out that I didn't play until very recently, I think, I think it was 4 or, four and 5, or 3 and 4 or something. Um but yeah, th those two games coming out, I'm really looking forward to them. Really looking forward to actually playing Grim Fandango without the horrible tank controls, which I know that they're putting new controls into it because the, all the fans have said, this is the one thing we hated about the game. We love the game, we love the, the, the adventure, we love the, the personalities and the voice acting and everything, but the, the controls are just horrific, so sort them out. <clears throat> Shame they didn't do that with Metal Gear Solid when they did the remake of that thing. <laughs> uh... Blame yeah. the controls. Yeah, I actually did did didn't do do too bad this Monday. I was I wasn't that bad. I don't care what you say. I'm uh, I'm yeah, proud of myself. That, that bad. <laughs> yeah, I was still, still pretty terrible. Still bad. <laughs> you set the bar so low that even if you. <laughs> so, um, any other anyone else then got anything that's cool upcoming? Uh, the new Zelda game. Yes, um, oh. that's on the Wii U, isn't it? When is it out? I will get a Wii U when that comes out. Uh, uh, <laughs> April. I think. Is it that soon? Yeah, it's, it's making not far me off. think the same way as Chris. I'm almost like that's the thing that does my head in about Zelda. That uh, is the fact that whenever a new one comes out, a new big shiny one, not like a little handheld one, because I don't give a yeah. shit about handheld gaming. Um, 
I'm always just like, I don't want to get a Nintendo now because Zelda makes me want to buy Nintendos because I want to play Zelda. The only one that I, the, of the big ones that I didn't ever get to play was I think Skyward Sword, which I heard very mixed things about. Anyway, apparently it was a bit, it was a bit linear, pushed you down a linear path, which is not really what I liked it. Again, it was another Zelda game. <clears throat> it wasn't that linear, I don't think. I, I really liked the sword thing, but there was, was a lot really of good. there was a lot of things. You had to use an extended Wii. Um, Wii U no, remote. not if you got one that had the uh, Wii Motion Plus already built in. Same thing. Yeah, you either had to get an extension for it or Wii Motion Plus. I had a Wii Motion Plus. I bought one off um, off eBay for it, but it was a bit dodgy. It's a little. Sometimes didn't do exactly what I was looking for it to do, and a bit annoying. But anyway, it was. Um, I really liked it, apart from some of the boss fights. And I think again, we went through boss fights, and I talked about the the demon. Um, yeah, the big black thing. The, the, yeah, that keeps changing, doesn't it? Temple monster thing, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Shittest boss it's, in the planet. It, it's like the ancient monster that you try to stop from resurrecting, and it re resurrects like. Few, they have to fight it a few times. Three so. times, and each time yeah. it's just a little bit faster and has a few more places you can hit it, but it. Oh, God. Just shut yeah. up. Get, just <laughs> shut up and go back in your hole. The new, the new Zelda looks like a, a proper evolution of the formula. Well, I hope it might be. I mean, the formula of. of Go to the forest temple. Go to the fire temple. Will probably still be the same. It can't. But, no, uh, it can't change that. I don't care who you are. No, it uh, is exactly, the same game. It, but exactly. But it Zelda fans like changed a lot of things about it. it. They've really changed the environment, and they've changed the way that you get around the environment as well. Yeah, uh, like um, when you're riding on a pony now, and you head through a forest, it'll automatically dodge the trees because yep. you know horses don't run into trees. <laughs> That's you what know what? There was an interview with yeah. it. Was it Miyamoto like or somebody? Was just it like was, yeah. Something. They were just like, well, we've got this thing where the whole, you know, you still direct the horse around, but it won't just run into objects randomly. And it's like because horses don't do that, and it's like it's a good reason not yeah, to have yeah. them do that, isn't it? Yeah. I was when you said it, then I was like, well, that's that's rubbish. It's like auto aim, and then you then yeah, then it, it actually does make sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that as well, and I'll definitely get a Wii U when that comes out. I think. Yeah. I might wait to see what the reviews for it are generally like before I'm really committing. But if it if it's as good as it as it has the potential to be, then yeah, it might be. Well, plus, Nintendo consoles are always cheaper anyway. How much is Wii U? You can know. get a basic one now for about hundred and fifty pound. Fuck all that, really, for a games console. I'm uh, I'm I. There's a few other games on the Wii U as well, but there's also a few games that I want. I mean, and there's also a few games on the Wii that I've got and haven't yet played. A couple of the Mario. Uh, titles that I've, I, I got like Paper Mario I played it for a, a few hours mm. really liked the change the the difference that they made to it but I got distracted with some some more for you know high fidelity on another console or something and just didn't go back to it um, is uh, Paper Mario the one that's a bit of an RPG or something or like yeah, it is a little bit. It's got you, a little element to it. Yeah, you do a lot of repeat like um, going back on yourself and coming you know and yeah it's it, it, to get the red key go back yeah I, I mean i played it a little bit but i liked the mechanic of changing it from 2d to 3d or 2d to kind of 2d in the other direction <laughs> it's, it's yeah. kind of yeah I, I i quite liked it i like that um one other game that uh, we've me and lou uh, are both looking well maybe not looking forward to but we heard about yesterday or i heard about yesterday a game called strafe that um what <laughs> what no, i'm just like i I don't get it. Right. Okay. So we, we we all watched the video just before uh, just before the yeah, show. Yeah. The video, the trailer is very entertaining. We, we I couldn't get the video to work when I tried to watch it. So, but I saw the first few seconds of it, and it's some. It looks like an old nineties trailer for a computer game. Exactly. What some it that, well, like... it's 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 cutting edge graphics, circa nineteen ninety six. Basically, that's the tout. Yeah. That's the way that the tout in it. But what I think what's happened, and by the looks of it, it's it's similar to again my, the, what I've done in my studio or what. Could have I could have easily done in my studio. Um, they they were going to go down this right. We're going to make a, a shooter and we're going to make it really cool looking. We're going to make it high fidelity. And as they got into it, they realised how much work all of that is. And they decided <laughs> right, we've got the concept. If you look on the Kickstarter page, they've got half the concept art and then half of the game art. And the game art is it's like it, they're saying that it's like really cool, br brilliant, awesome. It looks you know, like so. a Duke Nukem map, doesn't but, it? But yeah, it's just basically like old nineties graphics. I, I'm not sure if there's a place for it. I've got to. I've got to be honest. But I think they'll hit the hundred eighty-five thousand um, dollars 
thing because it's getting a lot of interest at the moment and a lot of hype. This is what I can't understand. I mean, that you watched the video, Lou, and you straight away said, I think I might back that. Yeah. But why is it just for the comic value of it? I mean, it doesn't interlude and, and anything about the game itself. Doesn't it it's doesn't tell play. anything about the game, but I've seen stuff about the game as well. And I like, I don't know, I think it's kind of strange that certain Kickstarter videos might have very little to do with the game, but still, the, the, because the, the, the you get the sense of humour, the, the sort of things that these people are doing, you kind of want to buy into that. It's marketing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, you uh, fell for its hook, line, and so that is marketing yeah. at its best, and they're going to do well because of their marketing video. And it, it's 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 fairly inspirational. I've got to be honest. Look, watching a video like that as a, as an indie dev, it's it's it makes me think there's there's hope for us. Yeah, if we if you can stand out from the crowd, if you do something interesting when it comes to either your Kickstarter or your promotional material that you send to sent to the magazines and everything and else. The thing is, in the end, I am an old-school first-person shooter game. I mean, I, I was brought up on these style games. It's my bread and butter. Um, so I, I'd love to go back to someone else's reimagining of those games. It's a nostalgia factor. I can't ah. go back to Quake. I can't go back to Duke Nukem. I can, but I don't really. But this could be a new experience that feels like the old experience. So I think that's why a lot of people will buy into it. Yeah, but there's always... Nostalgia's always got a massive down point to it. It doesn't. That's the fact it's that you're going never back to as good you as you played. remember. Yeah, no, but it's not nostalgia. It's this is different nostalgia. This is a nostalgic value in a new yeah. product. Yeah, yeah. it's it's well, different. That's what he's saying is that it, it reminds him of you know like games of yore that he used to play back when he was a kid. But it's not. It it, it can't be like that. Otherwise, you'll be massively disappointed. So it, it, you know, well, it does it, look like it's got it some new. Can either be a, a, a retro game with retro mechanics and make you feel nostalgia, or it can be a modern game with crap graphics. Yeah, and I think that's what it's going to be. With with also the element of enemies just throwing themselves at you without any real reason for it. You know, yeah, like but basically, there's like a wall open, and a lot of enemies will run out of it and stuff like that. That's what it's going to be. You, yeah. It's going to we be Serious to Sam with shit graphics, basically, <laughs> and, and a few which, extra little mechanics in it. It's what Serious Sam tried to do in the end, isn't it? It's what <laughs> Serious Sam tried to capture. Yeah, that's what I just said. And, did you? Yeah, you were talking over me, though, like Sorry. you always do, bitch. <laughs> I was uh, going to say that it's it's something that's been done quite well in 2D platformer-type things. A lot of games have played on that nostalgia factor. You know, Shovel Knight was a really big one for that, and that was really quite successful. But that also people had people genuinely a, enjoyed that game as well. That also had a, a very nice, fluid feel to it as well, better than the old like analog. Um, yes, so they could. Yeah. I mean, we've not. Have you seen any properly gameplay footage of Stray? Is it is it giving you the aesthetics of the sort of the the veneer of of a 1996 game? But is it actually going to be a bit better than that or not? It, it's got That's, some. It's got turrets in it and things like that. It's got. Um, it basically is going to be a, like a brutal doom type thing. Brutal doom is a is a mod for doom, or a, a, a Lou knows the specifics of this. But um, yeah. uh, brutal doom, as far fun. as I'm aware, is a mod that came out for doom that that basically re just made it absolutely mental. The, what, what <clears> brutal doom does and it does it beautifully is it makes it feel like that's what doom was like when you played it back then, even though it's not. It's nothing like that. No, even if you put and, it on the hardest setting. In fact, the yeah, hardest setting's quite hard in doom. John Romero has said this is the doom that we should have made. I think I'm, I'm not. Par I'm paraphrasing me. I don't think that's exactly what it said, but it was something along those lines. Yeah. He really enjoyed it, and I think there's been overwhelmingly positive feedback, and it's because it's taken the old formula, but but making it really crazy and fun. And I think this is what this is kind of doing, and it kind of gets that vibe just from the trailer. But the thing is, the trailer, that's all that's out there at the moment, the trailer. The trailer's got a little bit of footage in it, and you can kind of tell what's going on a little bit, and there's a few screenshots, but that's about it. But mm. this, as as Steve said, this is marketing, and it's done very, very, very well. And I don't know how they've done it. I don't know how if they've, uh, you know, got a production company in to do the video, because it looks like a 1990s video, Mm. And it looks really good for what it is. It looks like um, it, it's obviously an X-rated version of the of the trailers for Nintendo, you know, that you used to see, or the trailers for for the Cyber Razor Cut advert for, for Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah, you know that kind of thing. Like, the, yeah, and and it's I, I they've done they've done a good job, and as I said, it's inspiring to me, and I'm going to keep an eye on it. That's that's all I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, I will as well. But skeptic Steve, you can see by his face. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. I am skeptical about it, <laughs> but that's only because I. I either don't understand or I'm not getting what they're trying to achieve. It doesn't seem like there's a... Oh, uh, anyway. I'm, I'm positively sceptical about it. That's the way I would describe myself. It's the same as my Oculus Rift scepticism. I'm positively sceptical. I want, I want it to work, and I want this game to come out and be the new Quake. You know, I'd love it to look like old and crap, but play really well, and I enjoy <laughs> it, you know? Mm. I'd love well, it to being... look old and crap. But as I said, someone That's just watched it. That's where we are it. as gamers now, aren't we? Aren't we? <laughs> well, we are. We've, we admitted that when Josie was on the show a few week, uh, a few months ago. Remember, we were all sat there, and we all, she all basically, she called us out and basically said, "You're all insular people. Do you not like playing with other people? You like what you like, and you're stuck in that mindset, and that's." fine we, we know we we don't really play multiplayer games with anybody else apart from our group of friends but maybe we should play with other, i don't know oh, anyway, let's not get into that let's not go there i'm, no, I'm not playing not with there. other people i so tried playing a bit of uh, <coughs> chaos reborn uh online with a few randoms and again it was just a mixed experience yeah i haven't played it i have not played it since i've done all the fancy stuff to it i like the look of it but I also don't like the fact that it's such a big departure from the original. I so played I haven't it. played it yet. I and I should. I, I should be the world's biggest Chaos fan, and I am, but I'm the world's biggest Chaos fan, not Chaos Reborn fan. Have you played it yet? You said no. no. Well, well shut up it. then. Don't criticise <laughs> it until you've played it. But I don't want to play it, so that's the thing. It doesn't make me want to play it. It's just because you know that I'll beat you. Yeah, well, that's that. <laughs> Right, um, so next next stuff that's upcoming that's uh, out next month, actually, that I'm looking forward to, and I believe it's a PS4 exclusive, uh, The Order, uh, 1880, is that 1886? Are you looking forward to this? I'm, I'm looking forward to it because of the hype. It's a game. Yeah, and I've heard, I've also read a review in the latest PS magazine, uh, OPM thing, that it's um, it's actually it actually stands up as a good cover shooter, not just a you know good-looking cover shooter. Apparently, it's it's got quite a lot of substance as well. I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure if that's the way of putting it, but it's coming out and it's something to mention because it's well, it's yeah, quite big I, at the moment. I remember seeing some footage or seeing some promotional stuff about it and thinking, oh, that's like a cool idea, t taking uh, a game back to 1886, but it's like a weird sci-fi, steampunky... Isn't there some sort of supernatural or alien thing about it? I remember seeing... There's some kind of... Like and throw type of person. Yeah, yeah. Camera. There's a, there's and no that, Nazi that concrete. Really cool. Put it that way. That looked really cool, and I thought it could be a really dark and atmospheric, tense, like ho almost horror-y kind of shooter. You know, which would fit an eighteen eighty six vibe with your sort of oil lamps and your vic sort of Victorian kind of aesthetic. When I saw gameplay footage of it, it looked massively underwhelming. I was like, right, it's nice looking and all that, but it has that same everything looks great problem that Gears of War has. So it's just like, right, it's just a bunch of grey stuff happening. And also, <laughs> like, well, it's Super true, concrete though. simulator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I don't know, it just looked like, oh, it's, it's just this then, is it? That's what it felt like when I saw the footage, just like some blokes going around talking shite about whatever's going on in the story and shooting some stuff and going behind waist-high cover and a lot. And I was like... <sighs> Is it a Gears of War style cover shooter then, is it? The third person? It looks to be. I've not yeah. seen any footage of it, I've just seen these screenshots, which, uh, honestly, the aesthetic of the game is just gorgeous. It's such a beautiful looking game. Yeah, but it's going to be one of these things where you've got a fixed camera angle, you can't really explore. Uh... Yeah, I, like, I'm reserving judgment. I, I won't be able to play it anyway because I don't have a PlayStation, but it looks beautiful. But then again, it's also appealing to this yearning for more stuff like Dishonored. Hmm. Well, I mean, yes. is there a yearning for that though? I mean, as a as a wide thing, I, it's again fairly niche though. I know it was popular, but I don't think Dishonored is. It's widely regarded. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's widely played. But it has that. What I think he's saying is that it has that sort of uh, uh, an old fashioned, -y, old timey sort of world that's also futuristic and weird and, yeah. sci and sort of sci fi or supernatural. It's quite a. It, it is something. It does strike a chord among, with me as well as sort of like it's sort of about about playing a game in that kind of world is fun and exciting and interesting to me. Put but it this it, way, that, not, I, it was the on. sole reason why I watched Wild Wild West. 
I haven't there watched that and I don't that intend I to. There were two reasons I think of that were attached to Silver Hayek's chest, but they weren't <laughs> in the film enough to make it good. <laughs> right, the only other thing that um, that is coming out that I'm uh, looking forward to is the pushed back Grand Theft Auto 5, which is uh, 24th yeah. of March, is coming out. Give me it, give me it! I'm, I'm only saying that because I want to play it with you guys. And I wouldn't buy it otherwise, because... Um, like you said, I've already got it on PS3. I should really have waited for PS4 because I wasn't that bothered at the time, you know, but you know, it is what it is. Or, or PC, rather. I'm um, not interested at all in multiplayer. I just want to play through that game again in first person. Yeah. I, I, I want to play the multiplayer. I always thought the multiplayer GTA would have been... I don't know if it's any better now, but it felt like when I was on there, nobody was doing anything. Like, you go onto a game, everyone should be driving around randomly doing their own thing. And you'd go, right, should we do some missions then? And no one would join your missions. That's you how I like... feel about it. It's like it's got no purpose or no goal. It's like Gary's mod almost. You're just running around dicking about. The, there's, there's a few people that um, I follow on Twitter that are playing GTA Online quite a lot. And it, they're always posting pictures of things that are happening and, and new cars that they've acquired and put in the garage and stuff. I don't know much more about it than that, but I thought it might be fun to play with, with you guys. That's the only reason I mentioned it. But if you don't want to play it, I won't bother getting it on PC because I'm not bothered about playing through the single player again. I might as well just do that on the PS3. I'm not bothered about all this high-res texture stuff where, oh, you can read the screens on the computers. Oh, you can read the crisp packets on the floor. Excellent. Does it? Does it That's enhance? What missing. Yeah. That, does that enhance my gameplay any anymore? No. I don't want to you... play it first person on PS4 at all ever. I never want to play a first person game on a console ever again in my life. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> I have. It's the terrible. It, utterly atrocious i've tried playing i even tried playing um saints row 4 with my new pad i thought i got a new pad because i wanted to test something on my game and i also wanted to play things like shovel knight and that without having to spend an hour and a half configuring my ds and um, my dualshock 4 and getting it working with xbox control stuff um so i got this and i thought oh i'll give it a go and i played it for a bit and i was like oh this is all right and then i played it with keyboard 10 seconds into it i was like this is a million times better keyboard amount even for third person games i thought i was i thought i was third person you know pad forever but no screw it you know uh terraria is coming out for the ps4 the end of the month it's already out don't care is it have they done anything new for it is there anything playstation <laughs> specific on it? the 360's got a lot of um specific content for the 360 so the ps4 will probably have all of that and maybe a bit more but it's not more, is it, as such? It's just different. I think when uh, no, we no, were playing no, it... No, no, there's more as well. There's, there's additional right. content as well as um, the... As well as the like things like some of the bosses have changed. There's it does a few... feel like... It does, does feel like they're just kind of releasing lots of the same games on the new consoles without doing much of them. Yeah. That's like, how they oh, make money. It... Yeah, I know, but it's like they never really did that with PS2 to PS3. No, because... But PS3 to because... PS4, it's like it's all the same games being re-released for it. Because that we didn't have this. Remember that we've, we're very, very quickly forgetting as gamers that that up until recent years we had to buy things on CD, and now we don't have to do that at all. And we, we're getting we're becoming comfortable with the fact that we don't have to buy things on CD anymore, and we can just download them. We don't have to physically have a CD in order to go. I own this game, you know. And and it's a transition that we've made. It was very it was arduous to start off with, but we now got to a point where everyone's just forgotten about it everyone's just happy with the fact that they don't actually have a physical copy have you not noticed that um it's been such a it's been such an easy transition to make that i haven't really noticed it yeah well it i don't was, care it, about having physical copies anymore it well, doesn't it bother me at all it was originally did, yeah, yeah, yeah when steam first came out everyone was you know i can't i can't lend my my friends my game or anything uh, i can't i can't take games back to the shop it's like no one cares anymore. It's just, I think, as the prices have come down as well. Mm. I think the PC stuff. Well, well, PC stuff's a totally different thing. But when it comes to consoles, you're still paying forty, fifty, sixty quid and downloading games online. So I'm still buying CDs for my games on consoles, and I, well, I will. Console sales are still primarily physical media, though, aren't they? People go to the shops and buy um, a game. I think it's slowly. I don't know the figures, but I th I'm pretty sure that consoles are start are become. Uh, you know, they're becoming a lot more accessible online. I mean, Sam will. I think Sam will be able to vouch for this. He does a lot of PSN shopping, don't you? Yeah, you can download stuff on there. It's totally easy. And remember, we've got gigs and terabytes available on on consoles now. We've had gigs and terabytes available on PCs forever, but 
consoles are actually coming shipped with one terabyte, two terabyte drives now. Mm. Zombie mentioned right at the start actually about Microsoft and Xbox Store coming to Windows. Yeah, they're trying. I to don't do know anything a, about that. They're trying to do a lot of combination stuff. I mean, we've had the Windows get wi- games for Windows thing for a while. They kind of got rid of the games for Windows thing, but now they've. They, they're trying to push the App Store because it's integrated into Windows 8 mainly, and they're trying to push the. Um, they're trying to. They're releasing the new Windows Mobile with Windows on it, not Windows Mobile on it. Mm. So they're actually going to start putting the same operating system on everything that they release because, again, because uh, handheld devices are, bec- are becoming so good now, so powerful that they can run these operating systems without any problem, and we've got enough space on them. I mean, I've got 32 gigs in my tablet just on a tiny little micro SD card, you know. Right. So there you go. Okay. That's Indeed. all the questions answered. All the questions. All queries put to bed. Are there any? <laughs> is there? Is there any other um, stuff uh, like new, like releases upcoming that you guys are looking forward to? That uh, oh, there was one that um, uh, Jedi mentioned in chat. Um, H one Z one, which is actually out now. And I'm not Can sure. Explain to me what that is because I've seen some stuff about it and never really cottoned on to what it is. Is it just another open world zombie game or what? Do you know what DayZ is? Is that what it is? Is it connected to that? No, and it's not connected to it. It's a different game, but a better engine, apparently. It looks better. Um, right. And and I'm hoping they've got a bigger team behind it and releasing like more frequent updates and more, you know, um, substantial updates because I, I, that's what's putting me off starting DayZ is that every time I've tried to play it, it's been really buggy. I've run around and saw nobody for hours, and then when I do see someone, I get shot in the face, and I have I can't find any weapons, I can't find anything anywhere. I don't know what I'm doing in it, and it's just like, what what's what am I? Why am I wasting isn't, my time? Isn't Daisy one of those games that's never really been finished? Finished, or is it? Am I not? Well, what they did originally, they released it as an Armor Two mod. Uh, Armor Two being a, a army kind of simulator game thing. I've never played it personally, but I've got the Armor Two mod. I got that in a sale. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I played the Armour 2 mod a little bit. Uh, it's full of bugs, you know, it wasn't really that much fun. And then I played the actual DayZ game that they released with a new engine. I'm not sure which engine they're using. Does anyone know? No idea. I'm not sure if it's a custom one or a new one, but they're still really. I mean, this, they reset the servers every hour, you know, and it's like you play for an hour and then your character's lost. That was when I was playing it anyway. But now. I think it's a little bit more stable. They don't have to do that, but it's still like it still doesn't feel like there's much in it. You know, there's much to do, and it still feels like it's in beta. And I think it is still officially in beta. The Forge Light engine. There you go. That's what it's. Uh, that's what it's in. I've never heard of the Forge Light engine. Mm, so yeah, that's yeah. what H one Z one is. That um probably won't bother. I mean, I've I've played a few survival horror games recently i said i quite enjoyed that that dead state or whatever it was called state of decay sorry not dead state um but that i don't know I, i've I'd, i i want games where they've got an end i think saying that that just just made me think about a new game that's uh, in development that i'm very excited about the endless game the endless game no the game um, with nothing but endings De- deus ex <laughs> universe have you heard of this no Deus Ex Universe, they're in the middle of developing at IDOS, unfortunately. Um, well, who else is it going to be with a Deus Ex engine? Um, Iron Storm Austin! Oh, yeah. <laughs> As if they haven't dissipated and started about 10 other studios since then. Anyway, um, yeah, Deus Ex Universe, they haven't released much information about it, and all I've read about it is in official PlayStation magazines, so I don't know that much about it, but it sounds like it might be awesome. Because it's Deus Ex. Be interesting. Um, I, I tell you what, if that's an MMO, I might abort, I might change my mind. I might change my mind and get into that. It's a while off yet. Time though. for MMOs. Well, no, that's the thing. I haven't, but I will make in time for that. If it's if it's, <clears throat> and you know, I'll you know, I'll be jizzing about it constantly as well. If, if I do start playing, yeah, it. but it, it could be another Elder Scrolls Online, could it? It could be uh... terrible. But <laughs> I might also see it through rose tinted glasses as well because it's Deus Ex, and I. I I said Lou doesn't like Human Revolution. I love it. I love I quite uh, enjoy Deus- Human Revolution. I like that game. I thought it was cool. All right then, Lou's wrong then. Um, Deus Ex Two. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. A lot of people don't like Deus Ex Two. I loved it. Love Deus Ex Two. Well, I didn't play it first. I was no, I played it second, but 
actually <laughs> got into it first. Just, what? Right. You well, played, played the demo Deus of Deus Ex 1. Yeah, I played Deus Ex 1 and I couldn't get into it. But then I came back and played Deus Ex 2 all the way through, then played Deus Ex 1 all the way through. Oh, right, okay. So the story was backwards, but Deus Ex 2's gameplay actually served as a very good introduction to Deus Ex 1's gameplay. Because 1 is more complicated than 2. Hmm. Uh, yes, it is a lot more complicated. In fact, that that was one of the criticisms of two that it was dumbed down a little bit. But I but, still, I still got enough out of it. You know, I still felt like it gave me enough choice and options and enough uh, interface. You know, which was the main yeah. problems. It didn't have. It wasn't as complex. Um, but yeah, I think I'm I'm out of uh, out of things that we're looking forward to that I'm looking forward to anyway. But we've not yeah, already discussed before. before. Mm. I'm going to do something a little bit unprofessional now and go to the bathroom, but I'm absolutely bursting. Okay. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I need the toilet as well, so let's uh, let's have a quick break. We'll be back yep. um, in five minutes, all right? you got any intermission music, you can just play it. We have, and I'm just going uh, to put it on. In a bit, people. Hello, everybody. We're back. Hi. We've emptied our bladders and drank it. Because we're all an episode of Bear Grylls. Right? Yes, we are. I drank it out of the corpse of a snake. Yes. Yeah. And I've been I've been called so on my. So you urinated uh, into a snake's uh, snake's corpse and then drank it out of it. That's what <laughs> yeah. Bear Grylls did. That's what he did. Yeah. What? He just. He I didn't see that. Way. The thing is, like, I bet he did that after being there for twenty minutes. Like, he'll get there, he's like, "Oh, I'm really thirsty now. I better <laughs> drink some piss." He's like, "Mate, he just got off the helicopter. Fucking like, <laughs> take a day at least." He wasn't so thought. cold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're going to do a, a new section, um, which we've we've done this before. I think we did it in the first couple of shows, um, but we're going to have a little bit of a twist on it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little list section. Like Everyone lists. loves lists, um, yeah. and we're going to do it impromptu, and we're going to just throw one at each other. So I believe Steve and Sam both have a list. Didn't Steve say that he, he said he, he, he could did. have a list? That no, I, I said I could make one up impromptu. Oh, and I said yeah. if it's better than Sam's. anybody could make is one it, up. Is it is it better than the one that I've kept saying? What doors? doors. Yeah, <laughs> doors. Best doors. Yes. In the Best windows. <laughs> <laughs> So we were going to do something like you know, like we've we've done lists of, of best weapons and games, best bosses, that kind of thing. So we were just going to quickly kind of do a quick fire. And before, before we do this, does anyone in the audience have anything? That's a good point. But and That's nothing bet, about right? Minesweeper, for the love of God, shut up about <laughs> Minesweeper. Best games bundled with Windows. <laughs> they don't, you don't get games bundled with Windows anymore, do you? You, you don't, don't. No, you don't. It's all on the App Store. <laughs> So yeah, if anyone has any any lists of things that they want us to go through and favourite or worst or you know that kind of thing, we'll uh, we'll we shall we shall go on to that. Um, but alternatively, Sam, go on then. Uh, I'm just going to throw it at you as like so much uh, shit <laughs> through the cage of a, of a monkey fucking exhibit at the zoo. Um, top, top worst hairdos. In games, <laughs> worst hairdos. Or can it be worst. best? Worst. The, the hairdos that you think are the stupidest. And the right. I haven't played before. these games, but Dante from Devil May Cry, that can that emo do can do one straight yeah, off. Good choice. I would. I was gonna say Cloud, you know, because he's got I'm a famous do. Kind of I was, are, I was are we gonna, gonna say, say five? Are we gonna say we're gonna do five as well? Five. Jesus. Can we say the same ones? Yeah, of course we can. Right. You're not allowed to say exactly the same ones, though. That's a bit, uh, that's a bit cheap. Guile from Street Fighter 2. <laughs> I used to have a haircut like him, though. That's, yeah, that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> Talking about Guile, pretty much all of the male troops in the original XCOM had this stupid this, yes. this Guile hairdo the, going did, on. Did, did that in the um, in the remake as well, didn't they? Not the remake, the, the more recent one. Yeah, yeah they did. They put is that like, a, like a... Yeah, is that like a homage? Yeah, yeah, it must be, yeah. So they'd sort of walk out of the units like it was Gal's theme playing in the background because we know it goes with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Worst all hairdos. The, uh, all of the lemmings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green little mullets. Didn't they? Were they used to be like. Were they designed to be look like kind of uh, stereotypical Scots, like with the ginger hair and stuff, and they had to change it to green? Yeah, it's green. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, it was originally going to be ginger. They were going to be ginger lemmings. 
and they change it to green. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there that might be controversial for Chris. Um, post Metal Gear Solid One, Solid Snake. Never been digging that mullet, man, that he's got, that he's sporting. <laughs> Power mullet. The big boss has got it in Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm like, I don't get what it adds to the experience. Really don't. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to defend Metal Gear about, about a haircut, am I? <laughs> I don't know if you like it Maybe. or not. <laughs> what? I, I, I literally don't have an opinion about it, but. Right, fair enough. Um. <laughs> I can't think of any more off the top of my head now. To be fair, it's not really fair to just single out Cloud. We could say it pretty much any Final Fantasy character that I've ever seen. Oh it's god, a Squall. Twat, a Squall. Haircut. It's all them it's all them emo dudes. That's the thing. That's what that's what yeah. Squall's hair was pretty good. No, it wasn't. Shut up. <laughs> John Mack, the caveman ninjas. Oh my god. That's god, just that's yeah, just brought them. back memories. Jesus Christ. They what about shit hair? <laughs> <laughs> I say I, I'm going to say Guybrush Threepwood, but I actually quite like his hair. Hihachi has... from Tekken. I was going to say that. Yeah. Uh, it's just shit hair, dude. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> what's he called? Oh, the Bruce Lee one. He had a ball oh, cut. Law. Law. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah he, law. he had a perfect. And Paul. What the hell was a kid in play? Oh. That was just like a <laughs> yellow block on his head. He wanted to be a chef, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he also looks a bit like Guile as well, Paul, I find. Guy it's American, it's funny, they, they talk in American as well. Like I think that at that point in fighting games, all Americans had to have this crazy Tall flat blonde top. hair. <laughs> yeah. They were all they basically all seen Top Gun and thought, well, the Iceman, that's Americans. <laughs> that's all of them. That's Americans. A, a cocky, a cocky white dude with a shit-eating grin, spiky blonde hair, and sunglasses. <laughs> that's basically it. What about um, what about Vass? You class that as a bad hairdo, or is that something you'd aspire to have? Vass is, yeah, quite Vass is cool. Is, yeah, I quite like. I, th- I, th- I love Vass. I think Vass is brilliant. It's, it's a standout hairdo, though. I think. It's a standout character. It's annoying that they kind of killed him off halfway through the game, and you get like. <laughs> is it because oh, of his hair? Spoilers for Far Cry Three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, retroactive spoilers. Rewind this live thing and uh, erase it from your mind. Yeah, they killed him halfway through, and the, the other guy they brought in was just like, "Hello, I'm generic shit man." Just not memorable at all. What was his, even his name? Oh, Mc, McGruber or something like. He was South African, wasn't I, he? I, no, no, that, that he was the he was Vass's boss, wasn't he? That that yeah. dude. Yeah, it was only a couple of missions. He was he, Vass was dead for. It's all that time on the second island. Vass was dead. He killed Vass at the end of the first island. Admittedly, you don't spend as much time on the second island, but. Because if you've done the side quest, you've pretty much done everything you need to do. But yeah, I've got one, and it's not my usual type of game. But I only know this because my brother got a play S4 for Christmas. Uh, but FIFA, Wayne Rooney. <laughs> 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 because What's Wayne Rooney's like hair now? is shit in real life, and it's even <laughs> shitter in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say one last thing. I, I, I can't really think of many more, but. Um, all of the hairdos, all of the hairdos in Saints Row 4, they're all <laughs> terrible. The, the, the reason that I chose the ponytail is because it was the only one that was even remotely sensible. I, I'm also going to say all the hairdos in Morrowind because they just look like cats. They just look like they're just these cats <laughs> on top of people that are hair shaped. There isn't a single good hairdo in Morrowind at all. No, yeah. they, don't, they don't believe in good hairdos in Morrowind. <laughs> it's one of the, the main problems they have there. No, I think I'm. Uh, I think I've run out. I think I've run out. Right. I, think, uh, I was going to say most, pretty much most, most female characters in fighting games tend to have pretty crappy hairdos that are either the same generic ponytail or something really daft like Ivy from uh, Soul Calibur's got like this sort of the, the blokish mop top, but she's got like grey, purpley fucking hair. I was going to say uh, Laura Croft on the original Tomb Raider. She had a string of brown pooey sausages hanging from the back. <laughs> <laughs> she did actually, yeah. That was an early attempt at. I suppose women, long women's hair has always been a hard problem in games until cloth simulation and stuff recently. Mm-hmm. Think, how do you do it? You just you, you got to give them some crap spiky hair because it can't move. Oh, yeah, speaking of uh, Tomb Raider, I've actually got the new Tomb Raider that I haven't played yet. I want to put that on my favourites. Game. Yeah, I was. Um, I was. Is that the reboot. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's it is quite good. I've been I've heard apart from Steve be, saying that. Then. It's meant to be pretty good. <laughs> I've heard that they they try to. Um, Make Lara Croft a bit more uh, of a sort of human. relatable, yeah, re- relatable human being rather than a, a sort of Liz Hurley parody 
like super bitch or whatever she was because she was kind of like a bit hoity toity like oh I'm going to kill everybody oh they're dead it's like she never has really seemed to give a shit did she in the old game she was very no, much no. at all she wasn't a likeable so character at all she wasn't a likeable character and I think they've gone to efforts to make her a bit more of a normal fucking person in the new one and apparently that's quite a good aspect of it mm. it is I think that's enough for hairdos. But good, good, good quick fire. Good quick fire. Sorry, Sam was about to say something there. Sorry, was I was going to say, uh, just because if you played it, Steve, isn't the girl who does Lara's voice, though, doesn't she sound a bit like an American doing an English accent in it? Or is it actually... Kind of, yeah, but you, you can see past that. God, I've I've just put um, a casting call out for my game um, for, for a Scottish accent. <laughs> And I've put it on a few websites, and I've spoke to a few Americans and stuff. And I mean, if yeah. any, if just in case any of them are watching, I'm sorry, but y if you're American and you're trying to do a Scottish accent, don't, because you're you're not not terrible, but most of the time you're okay. But then you go into Punjabi, uh, or, or <laughs> honestly, I swear to God, it, it's it's like that the, it they can't do it without going into an odd accent or, or Australian or something like that, you know. But yeah, it's quite um, it's quite funny listening to them, but it's also quite weird. <laughs> I was going to say, Americans, you do know that groundskeeper Willie is not actually a good Scottish accent. Like, just <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. don't be operating on that assumption. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a that's terrible. It only, oh God! I watched him the... and Sean Connery, and that's the only uh, exposure they've got to the Scottish accents. I watched um, yeah. I, what is it? Conan, the the talk show host in America. The, the guy. Yeah. Actually, no, no. It was a Scottish guy who was doing a show like Corn, and it was a Scottish guy. But anyway, uh, he he had Tom Hanks on, and Tom Hanks was basically sat there, all kind of "I'm a superstar" type guy, and it, he had a bit of an ego about him. But he was saying that, oh, I, I taught, I was taught to do Scottish when I was, uh, you know, when I was doing my last role or role I needed it for. And then he he says the way to the way to say it is say silver plate in Scottish. And that's how you get yourself into your Scottish accent. And he did it, and I swear to God, it was the worst accent I'd heard in my life. Coming from Tom Hanks, and he was doing it on a live show. And it's like, mate, and you're in front of a Scottish person as well. You, 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 the person who's hosting it's a Scottish guy. <laughs> I was just trying to see if there was any Americans that can do a Scottish accent, but, you know, especially considering I want some uh, colloquialisms from, like, Highlands and things like that in it as well. It's, it's asking foots, a lot, I think. Foots instead of feet. That's what you're getting from the Highlands. Foots. That's that's the, the yeah foots. Okay. You, you don't have feet. You've got foots. Foots. There you go. Expert knowledge there. I'm I'm terrible <laughs> at a Scottish accent, but I could do better than a lot of. <laughs> I'll be with you. I I can do like a, like a daft <clears throat> stereotypical Scottish accent, but I wouldn't go so far as to call it good or convincing. Like it's blatantly a Scottish accent, but it's not a good one. Mm. It's a it's a cartoon one, like. <laughs> I can't do any accents. Whenever, whenever I try and do a Scottish accent, and I try and do the Scottish accent that I want specifically for this, I always go into like um, Billy Connolly type Scottish it's accent. <laughs> you no, start no, rambling it, about subjects and going, you know when you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. That's pretty good, actually. Um, right. Yes. Anyway, lists over, done with. That'll do. We'll we'll no, come up with some. Uh, ad hoc next week we'll probably it'll probably be a really horrible rambling section of the show but hey whatever um gaming news next things we've heard about this week things that are cool or, or annoying or whatever you want to talk about <coughs> i'll let someone yeah. else start because i've got quite a few that i can talk about um well one of the things that i saw today actually with was the um the announcement that the elder scrolls online has been made free to play all right um a alongside the release of the um the console versions in June or July, I think it is. I read something about the PS4 one coming out being free to play just yeah. now, just today actually, but I didn't realise yeah. that was happening on PC. That was as happening well. across the board, yeah. So the PC so that, version will be free to play as well. That means they'll introduce micro payments and. That means else. no one gives a shit because it's a shit game. Yeah, <laughs> and it won't last long, so don't buy no, it. No, I mean they basically <laughs> they've they basically made World of Warcraft with a Elder Scrolls skin and not a very good skin. No. And no one's interested in it's it. It's really. never appealed. I mean, when it first announced it, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And then as I read more and more and more about it, I was like, it's not going to work. I don't think it could ever have been good because the whole the whole point of the Elder Scrolls games is to be the best person in the world. 
You are the chosen yeah. one. You are better than everyone else in the world. And when you're in an hmm. MMO, you are no longer the best person in the world. You're just another <coughs> peon. You're all the worst man. You're all you get, you, the you, worst you, man. You get the shit kicked out of you by a vendor in yeah. an MMO. Yeah. yeah. So it just yeah, ruins that whole thing. Obviously, in you know, in any uh, Elder Scrolls game, at the end of the game, you know, you end up like your head of the thieves guild, the dark master, the dark lord of the Shadow Brotherhood, or whatever. You're just like the king of all the guilds. But solved you... the civil war, and this, that, and the other. Whereas it's not going to work in an MMO because apparently every time someone tells you that you're, but they still have the super special chosen one story. It's just that you happen to be coexisting with another, like th- several thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> so not the not so special one. Like they're still saying only you could have done this, and it's like yeah, but there wasn't just me. <laughs> Do you not think that um, MMOs are a bit guilty of that anyway? In general, they have to be. It's the only way it can work. Mm. No, they could just have all the quests, like saying we're recruiting for this particular quest at the moment, and uh, you're one of a million. You're not that important. Go on, do. Go and kill ten goblins over yeah, there the whole, on the left. The whole point of a game is that a, a game allows you to escape and be someone special, and if you might not otherwise be in real life, you don't have to be special, though, do you? Well, not always. you do. It's, it's, the games are normally very selfish. They're normally centered around you. You are the the focal point of the game. The whole universe of that game revolves around you, and it, that necessarily can't happen in a massively multiplayer game. No, but it doesn't have to. I think what Chris is but, saying is that it could it could change up the way that they present their you know narrative structure to fit in more with the actual game mechanics that they're offering i mean i was that's, being a bit facetious really saying that i've got to be honest with you but i think do, do you not think maybe that's the appeal of mmos then the people people that play them are striving to be the best all the time that is basically what mmos are about yeah yeah i but think you can I never be more, the best it's more about people interacting with other people i think mmos i think the sort of people who play them are the sort of people who are very communal whereas i don't know I did used to be. I did used to that's like that. That's a whole that, discussion in itself, really, about yeah. what it is. But yeah, that's uh, that's interesting yeah, and kind free of... Free-to-play, so you can give it a go. I might, I might, if it's free-to-play, but I, I still don't think I will. <laughs> I'll be honest, it doesn't appeal to me. And yet, I love all the Elder Scrolls games. I haven't it heard look, that basically, much... Basically, it looks, it looks like it's not. It's basically not an Elder Scrolls game. It's just got the name tacked on, mm. Yeah, what I can see of it. All right, so, yeah. um... Yeah, so uh, I've heard this week about um, quite a few things. Global Global Game Jam is happening this weekend uh, that ah. I was going to sign up to. And what Global Game Jam is, is a kind of an indie developer, or game developer, in fact, you don't have to be indie. Um, you, you go to a place, a central place, and you, uh, like, for example, like we've got a, a place called Mad Lab in uh, Manchester. Uh, Man- Manchester Arts and something lab, that's what it is, laboratory and uh, they, they hire it out to, to creative people or they give it away you know, give space away for free, that's where our Unity user group is, for example um, and they uh, they're, doing, they're doing the Global Game Jam this year and it's like six or seven pounds or something to, to sign up uh, most of the time it's, fr- these kind of things are free game jams, so I'm a little bit dubious about signing up just because it's you know six or seven pounds but i'm also on the other hand thinking i kind of want to you know and you get some food and you you know they're hiring the venue and that and so it may, it may be worth it but I, I can't i haven't done a game jam before so i'm a little bit nervous about it as well a little bit like i'm not sure i've done one and i enjoyed it it's it's not that i don't think i'm going to enjoy it the main problem with these the ones that I'm, I, I usually want to go to is that this one's in manchester and they close the doors at six o'clock and you have to go home and continue doing the game jam and then you go back the day after and then you come back so or i can get a hotel or something over there and go out and have a drink with the people or i don't know make some friends in manchester and go to the game jam with them and you know it, it's quite difficult for me because of where i am in the country but I think home game jams. It's like I'd what I'd rather be doing my game. I'd rather be spending the weekend programming my stuff, you know. But I know mm. that's a common a common thing, uh, and it's a bit of a real, you know, taking your mind off what you've got to do and keeping the creativity flowing and the juices going and learning from other people. But yeah, global game jams on this weekend. If anyone's into uh, into game jamming and and writing computer games, even if you're not a programmer, even if you just you know you're an artist or you're a you know, you need to have some skill to go into it. You couldn't just go in and go, I've designed a game, because it doesn't work like that. You get given a random subject, generally, and then you, you jam on it, and then you all kind of collaborate, and well, it's, or, or you can work on it on your own, like I think Lou did for Specky Jam, the last, the last yep, one you did, Specky wasn't Jam, it? yeah. I'm still considering it. I'm, I'm, 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know about it yet. I, I kind of want to, but I don't know what to do on the nights. <laughs> you know, don't know if I should just drive back or or what. Something else I um, just finished recently was um, Awesome Games Done Quick. This year's Awesome mm -hmm. Games Done Quick. I don't know how much they raised, but it, I think it was over a million dollars again. Uh, I'll tell you. Did any of you watch any of the stuff on, on, on it this year? Um, they tend to record them and put them up on YouTube anyway, don't they? I've seen a few Awesome Games yeah, Done Quick videos they're, they're, on they're YouTube. Up, yeah, they're upload, uh, uploading new videos every day. They raised one, one, one point five million dollars over the course of uh, 160 hours of speedrunning. Yeah, they're basically sponsored speedruns, all of them, aren't they? If anyone doesn't know, yeah. that's basically what it is, right? I think I watched a Final Fantasy VII one of them a while back. Yeah, they did one this year as well. They completed it in three hours. Yeah, the guy that did it, it was <laughs> it was th around three-ish, maybe less than three, in fact. Uh, yeah. well, glitch, glitchy expensive. things. Yeah, glitch, yeah, was, glitching um, to hell. I, I must say, I one of the things that I really enjoyed from last year's was the Borderlands 2 run and they didn't do anything like that this year which was a shame um, but it was still good, there were still some, some, some good runs there uh, they did Duke Nukem and uh, and a lot of the old build engine games and stuff And uh, your camera's having a, a little fit Lou it's moving around is it? are you touching your monitor or something? Yeah. I was touching something, sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, took, you, took you, your train of thought away then yeah, but yeah, I was, I was watching that. I, I basically every night I was catching up on some of the the uh, the stuff that I've been waiting to see on the agenda. It was good fun. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, again, it's one of those things I want to watch, but I just. Every, I'd really I, like to go to one. I'm trying to really avoid anything that's distracting me, and I'm talking about YouTube, Twitter, TweetDeck, anything like you know Facebook. Even though I do have to kind of go on TweetDeck and kind of interact with people, and you know, I I, I use it to not just to do that, but to get help as well when I'm when I'm struggling with things and I've made quite a lot of friends on that it's still not the same you know it's it's still time wasting in my eyes at the moment and I really need to plow down with things mm. um, another thing that's going on uh, in the next couple of days I think over this weekend again is PAX South and that's in America it's a uh, game convention penny arcade thing and they they launched it quite a, quite a while back now and uh, actually my composer is at the uh, he's doing a um, <clears throat> he's doing a, a panel there or something. I'm not sure what about exactly. I should probably know that. And I'm sorry, Ryan, if you're listening. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's just under the game convention, I believe, and it's just solely about games. Um, we don't get anything like that, unfortunately, over here. Not really. There's a few. Um, what do they call them? Conventions or whatever you want to call them. Mm. Con uh, Cons are the conventions, yeah. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are down south, and I don't get to see them. But I think there may be an indie one popping up uh, up north soon, so I'll be quite interested to go to that. Mm. <clears throat> um, one thing I did want to talk about, and and it's not strictly, and I want everyone's opinion on this. It's not strictly, um, it's it's not strictly about games, but it will affect us as gamers. Um, and it's the new legislation that's been brought in, the or, or going, or they're talking about possibly bringing in, which is banning encryption in the UK. And have, it, have anyone has anyone heard about this? On I the have news? heard about that. Yeah, David Cameron uh, is trying to push it forward, isn't he? Yeah. Now, basically, the, the premise here is is after these the Paris attacks that have went on recently. For those of you who don't know what happened there, I think you've probably been in a box, so I'm not going to explain it. Um, <clears throat> Even, even I don't follow the news, and even I know about it. So you know, horrific, obviously. But the, mm. the after this, obviously, everyone's reactionary, and the UK government is going right. We're going to take this. Uh, this is my opinion on it, of course. Um, we're going to take. We're going to take this as a, um, a, a as a a reason to take away more civil liberties from the from the the working man, essentially. And they're basically saying we're going to ban encryption. That that's essentially what they have that they have to do in order to. Uh, be able to see terrorists um, online communications now at the moment they're talking about things like WhatsApp and uh, screen what's it called screen something Snapchat, Snapchat. Uh, I've never used Snapchat or WhatsApp but apparently they're encrypted Skype's encrypted though as well so well uh, well everything Facebook's encrypted it uses yeah. SSL so everything at the moment is uh, everything on the internet most things on the internet anyway are encrypted in some way shape or form and they stop people from snooping on you that's the reason that they're we're not going to go into great amount of details why this uh, 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 why encryption encryption exists but it's there to protect us and it's there to help us uh, to help our privacy 
Now they're saying that they they either need a back door into all the encryption and all of the applications, which is not <laughs> practically won't work anyway because. The, the if they, government, if they've got a backdoor, then someone else has got the backdoor as well. Exactly. Um, or, or they want to ban it entirely, which is a complete nonsense because it's, well, one, it's impractical. There are going to be people who are still, I mean, I've got encryption algorithms that I've written myself or, or I've grabbed from other places, you know, I've grabbed algorithms from other places and I've implemented in my own code. So how are they going to stop and police that kind of thing, you know? Mm. So well, how I, do you think this is going to affect gamers then? Well, it affects us in terms of, th there's, there's, lots of things that we i mean we we type we're constantly typing passwords in, like mmo gamers and social gamers and things like that they're constantly typing passwords into websites in order to uh, and login mechanisms in order to play computer games you know facebook i'm, t I'm not just talking about what we refer to as serious gamers mm -hmm. casual gamers on facebook you know they, they'll be they'll be affected by it they're, the you, privacy you know the information will be available for people to sniff again if there's no encryption if there's no uh, if https is uh, is banned which is essentially what they're saying <laughs> there'll be no internet the, well, really no there not would be but it, well, you wouldn't be able to use facebook or they'd have to they'd have to come up with a new protocol for it that is God, <laughs> i don't i couldn't even imagine how do you think it. that all this is just a lot of media spin? Yes, yes, of course yeah, it is. It because like it to me. <clears throat> how realistic would it be to ban encryption? Or because to give a back door? You can't. Because if, if you go up and say, right, encryption's illegal, you can't have encryption, someone's got an encrypted program. Well, oh, no, we can't see what it is because it's encrypted. It, <laughs> it's well, that, that, I it's think a story maybe... that's, that's purely being generated by the media to cause hysteria. I uh, know, I, I, I agree with you, and that's I haven't, apart from now, I haven't really passed any opinions on it apart from well so they're going to start banning vpns for example because that's vpns are just encrypted network you know encrypted tunnels to uh, we use i use vpns constantly because i i usually work remotely and i can access corporate networks and i'm talking about corporate networks like banks and uh, insurance companies and travel companies you know p places that have got sensitive data that the privacy act has been created for you know th th there's loads of information at these places if there's no encryption that apart from firewalls there's no other way to to stop it the thing is the problem is, is even if they did d do this right even if they banned it or they gave backdoors into these apps the terrorists would still like like everybody does with torrents they'd go elsewhere they'd do something else they'd, they'd write their own programs that you know that the, the, there's a way around it excuse me i think it's just a bit naive to think that they already haven't got backdoors into all these programs i think there's a lot of there's a lot of places they do have backdoors into yeah but i think maybe they're using this as a, a way to maybe make it public possibly they're, they're trying to they're trying to muscle in on people like facebook because one of the problems was that uh, apparently there was some terrorist activity that could have been prevented if facebook had told them but facebook obviously have the policy that they don't reveal anything they're not they, they, they can't be browbeaten by a government into revealing information that's private hmm. and so it's the government's are trying to get into that errors. It's trying to deflect attention away from what the real issues are. Yeah, and the problem is, is it's not, it's not encrypt. Yeah, it's not encryption that's the problem. It's the fact that, well, there's. I don't even want to go into it. Actually, there's there's way too much political stuff going on here in this conversation. But, the, the, it, yeah, you're right, Steve. I agree. There is <laughs> too much smoke and mirrors. <sighs> it it sounds like the kind of thing that they just it, it's just to blustered out empty threat isn't it it just sounds like it's one of those well, like it's, all, uh, it's we will, worth we will do the things that the people need us to do to make the things that the, the, the things are going to happen it well, sounds like one of those kind of the way that i understand it right basically after the last terrorist attacks they said that they they would have stood a better chance of catching or stopping these people if they would have had access to their facebook and social media accounts which is then went back saying, yeah, but they won't give you that. So then someone's presupposed and said, ah, yes, but then the government will probably just ban encryption. Yeah, yeah. And then the media went wild with it. No one well, from the government David, has proposed David Cameron, it. Yeah, David Cameron actually did say that, but his words were kind of to the effect of, "We, um, do you really think that a, um, a, a form of communication that we can't ever see should be legal? Yeah, Again, so you're paraphrasing, paraphrasing it? Yeah, and he, he said something. Yeah, he said something to that effect. He, he basically was yeah. saying that the um, if if you want us to protect you from terrorists, then we need to do this. That's that's essentially what the, yeah. he said, and it's nonsense. That no, <laughs> like, because he's been after that <coughs> since he got into power. 
the Christ, they've been after that for years since it got in power. Since the internet was formed, they've been trying to monitor people and trying to get a tab on people talking about. And they're just using this terrorist attack as a bit more fodder to try and get the the bill through uh, through Whitechapel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, again, this is the case most of the time with these kind of things. It's uh, it gets to a point where, unfortunately, the people <coughs> who are making the decisions don't understand the technologies involved. And they make bad decisions based on it. And the people, and the vast majority of the people who use these technologies don't understand them these days, at no. least anyway, because they're just internet users. They're not. They're not technical minded people. You know, they're just normal people that are, happen to be using HTTPS on a website or or whatever. You know, there's a lot of people out there using a lot of technology that they don't even begin to know the foundations for like yeah. uh, when all these uh, these celebrity photos got leaked uh, from the cloud right, that's just ignorance on their part it's nothing to do with the people who hacked it oh the real people hacked it they weren't hacked password they went to their cloud account and typed in the default password and got in mm. I mean it's just you yeah. deserve what you get when it comes to that type of stuff I think you do and if you're not if you don't have a password policy such as change it every year or whatever and make sure your password's complicated then it's your own bloody fault I'm not saying anyway it, but anyway yeah. other news um, has anyone heard of uh, Mousebox no no it's a PC in a mouse okay yes uh, all you do is you plug a a micro HDMI cable into it, and in then you use that as your mouse cable. Yeah, and then that just moves. Right, okay. How capable is it? Like a Raspberry Pi sort of power? No, it's um, I had this. Uh, I think it's like a one uh, one and a half gig CPU ARM. I think uh, one hundred twenty eight gigabytes internal storage, Wi Fi, USB. If it's but ARM, it's, it's running Windows or anything. Then I don't know what it's running yet. I just uh, I was reading about it the other day. I, no, was quite I, I haven't heard about it. It sounds like a gimmick to me, though. It's been done by a few of the people who used to work at Nokia, apparently. I think. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Mm. I don't know, I'm not sold on gadgets for a, you know a good while until and after they've come out. I think. I'm never. I'm never really an early adopter with these things. And plus, I've got an awesome PC down here. You know, why do I need a PC and a mouse? PC and a mouse. Who needs because a PC you can carry mouse? it with you anywhere you want and plug it into any high definition display. You know what? When it gets to a point where I can do that and go to a LAN party and play games with it, I'm in. Then I, yeah. you've 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 sold it to me. You probably be pay quick to it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it'll, I think I I've got a feeling that enthusiast gamers, again, because we we're on the cutting edge of consumer technology. We're not on the cutting edge of technology, but enthusiasts generally get stuff that hasn't been developed into these tiny little packages so i think we'll always have big boxes won't we as as you know yeah games. we'll get as much as we will we'll, that is our form factor now we'll get as much as we can into that box yeah it won't get smaller it'll just get more powerful yeah one thing I, one thing one thing i want to talk about um it's been mentioned on the news quite recently but uh basically a guy pulling a three-day um gaming marathon in taiwan hmm died um, yeah. basically he keeled over or he, he basically he laid face first down on the desk and no one even noticed and then when did did find out and they kind of stretched his corpse out the people didn't stop playing games still like it's continued like oh right he died then never mind continue farming it was there on shout and new button <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the second death in in Probably a couple of months. Another guy in Taiwan died. I'm amazed. Oh, he was on a five-day stint, wasn't he? I'm amazed yeah. this hasn't been sensationalised as well and been used as a new fodder. There's shit going on the news at the Well, minute. the crazy thing is that I've looked all over and I can't find out what game he was playing. <laughs> and that smells <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? It does matter. Oh, you I mean all right? Uh, the game, 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 game is so good that you were playing for three days straight and then died. An Ubisoft executive <laughs> was stood behind him in the cafe, and he, he covered it all up because he was playing Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> <laughs> like no, but no one could physically play that game for three days straight, from what I've seen. Your yeah, mind you would went, explode from the. If you went on bugs. a three or five day bender <clears throat> of anything, you'd. You'd stand a good chance of dying. I feel yeah. I feel like dying after a two day land without sleep. For God's sake, <laughs> I, I feel like actually keeling over like voluntarily. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it. it's his own bloody fault again. Um, 
I'm not on his side here. Yeah, I'm gonna quote. I'm gonna quote Break here. I'm reading this the article on, but it's it it goes there. Uh, in um in Taiwan this past weekend, after an epic three three day battle against human contact, a 32 year old gamer ganked his last iron horde, <laughs> but he succumbed to cardiac arrest and then collapsed dead. Shouldn't the iron horde? Well, that's that's World of Warcraft. Yeah, he succumbed to cardiac arrest. He had yeah, a heart but, attack. Well, he, his heart stopped beating, which is what cardiac arrest yeah, means. Oh no, sorry, yes, succumbed to it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> he didn't which fight. Which is basically it, he died. Alive, he? Well, that Cardi- could be anything, though. He could have had liver no, failure that, and then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's in no way uh, attached to playing computer games. Playing computer game doesn't make your heart fluctuate. Well, it might make you beat a bit faster if you're frightened. But it's not going to stop your heart. There's yeah, obviously been other things going on in his body. Uh, he's probably yeah, th- that guy has probably done the same thing this f- every weekend of the year. If he's if he's that kind of guy who sits in a, a cafe, he became unemployed apparently. Sorry, he became unemployed apparently and just started going to the cafe all the time because that's the only place he could go. I figured he could probably go to the job centre as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of all he's doing is sat in there, not eating, drinking loads and loads of caffeine. And keeping himself awake, then you are going to put massive amount of stress on yourself. Aren't I you? bet. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to be fair, that kind of thing. If that did kick off, right, and and the the world started going, oh, computer games kill everybody. Obviously, I mean, I don't think it would because I think it's. I think computer games are becoming more accepted now, aren't they, in general? And I don't think there's always going to be organisations that are going to kick off about it. But I think generally, that they're not seen as toys, and they're not seen as something that only immature people use as entertainment anymore either mm. so i think even if it did kick off i don't think it'd be that big a thing i don't no, think not anymore the, no and i think int- we're past out that interest, out of interest what is the longest gaming marathon that you've done each of you has what to be crossing as a marathon um continually playing the same game pretty much without a break without a break as in without sleep yeah or or without going to get something from the fridge well, no. You, you, I mean, you can you can go and get something to drink, or go for a wee or something. You're gonna have to take a wee at some point. But I mean, is in a continuous gameplay session without taking uh, a. Does that l- to be the same break? game? I'm gonna say you're playing the yeah. same game, or are we playing multiple games. I'd say, say it's the same game. It has to be Quake Two, then. In that case, for me, it has to really? be. Really. It has the to same be same game. I'd say Dungeon Keeper Two. That nearly really? drove me a loopy. That Civ session that we had a few months back, that was quite long for me, that I've got to be long. honest. That was, that was about eight hours though, wasn't it? I mean, I've, I've played Final Fantasy VII straight for 21 hours. I've, I've, I uh, have single played seat, it. Yeah. Single seat session. Um, uh, I, did, I did it in a lot less than 21, but yeah, I did it in one session. I, lo- I locked myself in my, in my bedroom with a couple of bottles of pop and just, just hammered it in yeah. one sit. That's the longest and I've And then he started playing movie. Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as, as I, I said, I think this guy probably, if they did a post mortem on him, I bet you that he'd have serious health issues somewhere. We must do. And he, it'd been pr- it'll have been proven that he, he was doing that quite a lot. He'll have had that one session, and that'll be when he died. But he'll have had loads of sessions previous to that. I bet. Hmm. Uh, Corpse has mentioned that um, there's lots of stories in this regard. Um, for World of Warcraft, which is, you know, that is a sort of game that people will play huge sessions of. Um, I've played MMOs. I've, I've played very long sessions, like fifteen, sixteen-hour sessions on EverQuest and stuff. Yeah, same here, really. But um, I don't know. I can't really think. I mean, I don't do it these days. I, I, I said the recent games of Civ, I've been, I've been hammering it, and I do lose the track, lose track of time quite a lot. But I do get up for a wee and I do eat meals and I do, you know, drink while I'm, while I'm doing it. It's not like I'm dehydrated myself or anything, you know. It's mm. Sam. Did you say what you, what your longest stint was? Um, I can't. I genuinely can't think of one particular game that I've had a massive long marathon. I've never, I've never done a big marathon gaming session like that. I've played games a lot, but I've always, yeah, there's always been something else going on, or it's been broken up by something like I've stopped. For a good couple of hours or something, even if it's just even if I've been standing in one game all day, I'll have stopped and done something else at some point. Well, <laughs> I think Sam should be off the podcast then, if uh, if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real gamer. Yeah, I got there's a, there's a twenty four hour minimum to be allowed on this podcast. <laughs> Uh, one other thing, I, it's a kind of a, an honourable mention for uh, one of my game dev friends, uh, Danny Daniel Goodall. 
um, who I was on MMO Buff with. He was he's a guy who started MMO Buff with uh, with Josie. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, MMO Buff is a show that was uh, a, a kind of about game dev in general and indie dev, and it was bringing kind of guests on to, to help. Unfortunately, it's not around anymore, but hopefully at some point in the future, something new will be uh, coming out of out of the cracks. But um, uh, he's recently started the Brighton Game Collective, and what he's done is he's, he's got an office, I believe, and he's hiring out the desks in the office to indie developers, so indie devs can come in hire a desk so they can go somewhere to do the work and they can sit with other game devs and they can kind of you know not just for collaboration i think it's more for indie devs are generally sat at home on their own all the time so you know getting them out into into the public um he's doing it there's various other incentives i think as well going on with it i haven't been paying that much attention with it being brighton um with it being 400 miles away from me but you know <laughs> it's uh, it's still worth mentioning if you're interested um follow at d good y'all on um on twitter i will uh, i'll find uh, i'll find exactly how to spell that and you can uh, you can have a look but it's it's a brighton based thing so if you're around that area go for it um apart from that the only other thing that i i kind of has been have been kind of has piqued my interest this this week is a game called idarb now have you heard of it no nope. it's a brawler game but it to me i haven't looked into it too much but it sounds like it's a collaborative development process written by the community in some way and i'm not sure how they're doing that exactly but it's a it's a brawler where you you just jump around and kill each other you know like super smash brothers type thing um but it's it just sounds interesting and i don't know much more than that but it's worth having a look at if you just go <coughs> hashtag i darb that's i d a r b on um on twitter there's loads of information about it and there's a few people uh mike mika who's a, a fairly well-known uh, indie dev he's um I think he's behind it, or he's in charge of it, or he's at least involved in it in some in some capacity. Yeah, uh, he's uh, he's in charge of it apparently. Right. So um, yeah, he's uh, it's everyone's going on about it all the time on on Twitter, and I I should really get involved, but as I said, I'm trying to stay away from from as much as I can at the moment. Apart from that, I haven't got anything else to talk about in terms of gaming news. There's nothing else that's popped up this this week. Um, apart from Gamergate is still going on and. It's turned into a right clusterfuck. I've got to be honest with you, from what I can understand. Don't, don't go there. No, but I, you know. it was it, it it always was one. Yes, it was. there you go. I think uh, yeah, I think it's just getting a bit out of hand now. But let's not let's not have too many opinions about that because we'll have all the haters jumping on us. I have no doubt about that. Let's say we can talk about the government encryption, but we just can't talk about Gamergate because we just can't go there, can everyone we? Everyone hates the hates the government, and everyone's going <laughs> to jump on the same bandwagon. But the problem with Gamergate is, is that everybody's got a different opinion on it, and everybody's wrong, and everybody's right. That's the problem: is nobody's agreeing on anything, and it's pretty much it's, just wrong, though. Yeah, it's just a load of people whinging, basically, from what I can yeah. say, on both sides of the fence, and no one's really getting a point across. And I think most places are kind of getting that impression from it now. It's just it's turning into a bit of a farce from what I can understand but that's the furthest I'll go on my uh, my opinion I haven't really been involved so I don't know that much about it I have to be honest but yes um, anything else you guys have seen this week or interested in no not really no all right well um, in that case we'll close the show and uh on that, if you are interested in, in us in any way, shape or form, you can follow us. We've all got our names underneath, apart from Sam, who doesn't do the internet uh, or PCs or things like that. And um, I don't do internet. No, uh, he does PSN, so you can follow him on PSN, but you, I'm not going to tell you his name. And um, <laughs> you can uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at Resonance Arcade, which is where most of our updates go out. We also update on Facebook, forward slash Resonance Arcade. Uh, Twitch.tv, which you're watching us on, uh, forward slash Resonance Arcade. Luckily, we got all of the names, so we're, we're on all of them. And Google Plus and all that bollocks, and let's not talk about that. And um, YouTube, which we, we, we need more subscribers on YouTube, so get on there and subscribe to us. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. And we'll call that a night. Yep. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye.